for you thought there was nothing left for you to do with your night the revolver podcast mama hot flash crew is hot always doing you right with a fresh take on gaming weekly pcs consoles and handhelds bump what you heard since birth on this earth we know that the future belongs to the nerds Revolve Alive, what you say? Revolve Alive, every Sunday at 6, bringing that gaming magic to your life. Doing it live on Twitch to show that you don't want to miss. Be sure to subscribe. Crack yourself a brew. If it work, are you who? Now you can join the crew for the ride. Xbox, mobile, and hot topics around the nation. To gaming rigs, headsets, hardware, and PlayStation. Shout out to Joe. Can't you see him glow? Token brother brought the flow. Now it's time for the show. Let's go. go. And so for a guy who cuts his own hair, I really think I do a pretty good job. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live. The gaming podcast is... <laughs> Did you just for... humble brag about giving yourself... I mean, that wasn't even a humble brag. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't trying to be. It's someone who... Look, a look guy who he cuts his own shit. Right? I don't understand. He, like, he, he cuts his own are, shit. Are you cutting your beard? What kind of monster are you? Damn. A monster that likes to look fucking good. Yeah, look, Beauty and the Beast. We got some beard, 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 beard on beard idealisms clashing right now. Yeah. Like <laughs> Ryan, why could you just love me for me? Okay? <laughs> I buy tremors. I want to use them bitches. I want you to change. I like that ass, but I I need you to change. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. At least you're fucking honest. What's going on, guys? <laughs> to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast. It says forget the past because the future belongs to us, the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today, joined by the Revolver Live co-hosts, Brian Rabbit and Mr. Wilson. Brian, how you doing this week? I haven't seen you in two weeks. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. That's right. That's Happy I... Mother's Day. We didn't do a podcast last week because it was Mother's Day. Um, this week, oh. I fucked up. And I took a drive out to Micro Center. So there's no Micro Centers in Connecticut. Ooh. The closest one is in New York State. I had to drive out to New York State. Uh, I got to say, I, I was pretty reasonable. <laughs> All things considered. Define pretty and define reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Neither of those words have ever been used about me <laughs> separately. <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, so if you don't know, uh, on Air PC sent me a new Threadripper processor and a new uh, a new motherboard to go in my streaming PC. So we're upgrading the streaming PC. So hopefully, uh, you know, as of Tuesday, the stream quality is going to go up a notch. But as we were talking about it, we weren't quite sure if the new motherboard, which is bigger, was going to fit in the old PC case. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to drive out to Micro Center because I, I knew it was out there. I've never made the made the the journey the journey out there to mecca <laughs> and uh i gotta say it was pretty awesome i mean they have like we don't have stores in connecticut that sell pc parts i mean there's like best buy that sells like a few parts but it's really like limited supply being able to go there and they have like a hundred different cases all in stock oh you know they have oh, like end. any keyboard that you could possibly want they have every oh, mouse you could possibly want they have a they have a Mouse pad rack. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at like CPU coolers. I'm just looking at all this shit. I mean, the the one thing that I bought that was really silly, okay, was this. I'm gonna show it up on the screen. It's a addressable RGB strip to go inside Ooh. the PC. But I just want to know. It costs thirty dollars, right? I want to know how much the spinning box cost. <laughs> oh, yes. How yeah. much? What portion of my thirty dollars went to developing At least two this sold. box? I would have, I would have bought that shit, taken that out, and put something right? really cool in there, and that would have been it. I was actually thinking of something like that for for my tower as well. That you could just put that in there and kind of line the outside of the box, so you have extra RGB yeah. lining. Yeah, so it you know just lights it up, makes it look pretty. So I, I'm starting to get a picture here. Yeah. Uh, you said you did you did pretty well. You did okay. Pretty well. Uh, yeah. You were able to get back in the house, I presume, because I see you here now. Yeah, uh, I snuck you, in the you spent, house. 
He spent an extra thirty dollars on something. That was he just he left, you know. Ho hum. Uh, <laughs> How much? How much did you end up spending? In what range? A couple hundred dollars? Hold on. Did you sp- before before he answers that, there's going to be an answer he tells us offline <laughs> and an answer that he tells us on stream. Because this is how I picture Briar before leaving. I imagine he unlocked his office window, pulled up the back entrance, and just started throwing <laughs> shit through the window. Came in the door with one little tiny bag. And I was like, I'm good. I got what I wanted, babe. <laughs> got what I wanted. It was thirty dollars. <laughs> Uh, so, I bought the case. You can see the case behind me. It's uh, uh, The case I bought was, the, if anybody wants to know, the Fractal Define R6, which is a nice big case with a lot of storage bays for drives because my goal is I, ha- I still have a Mac in my office that I use for video editing. All my video editing gets done on the Mac in Final Cut Pro. I've actually taken a couple of online courses over the last couple of months to start learning Adobe Premiere. Sorry, <laughs> the name escaped me for the second. And I want to, I want to move all my YouTube editing stuff to Windows so I can kind of stop. It's very confusing right now. I have like multiple Elgato capture cards set up and like a very odd. My audio has to go to yeah. my audio. I have a Yamaha mixer and my audio has to go to two separate PCs in the back. <laughs> so it's that very awful. strange. That sounds it, like I a mean, nightmare. And to set it up, it was pretty pretty crazy to set up. And if something goes wrong, it's very hard to troubleshoot. <laughs> but when it's working, it's it's working. Uh, oh but yeah, I mean, I, I basically I bought a case of a power supply and uh, oh, I bought like uh, these very fancy green uh, towels and zip ties and microfiber microfiche. Yeah, it's oh, always right, nice to have right. some microfiber towel, towels around for cleaning it. Your you stuff. don't need to hear this, but you work very, very hard. You're extremely dedicated, and and you deserve what you, what you want, not just what you need. Hence the RGB lighting. You deserve what you want, and uh, from the bottom of our hearts here, it uh, spins. Your, I haven't yeah? even I haven't installed Yo. it. I'm already having fun with it. He's got spinners <laughs> on his RGB. Spinners on my RGB. <laughs> Yo, those 20s or 22s, dog? Uh-huh. He didn't know it. He didn't know it until he started fucking with the bag. He thought something broke. He opened the bag and it flipped sideways. Oh, this is an added are you perk. Gonna be, are you going to be putting this together on stream, Briar? Are you going to be doing this on your yeah, own Yeah, tomorrow. Time? Tomorrow we're going to do it. Uh, I'll probably start around noonish, and we'll we'll just do the whole PC build like we did the last one. Uh, nice. The last one is much more like a gaming PC. This one is going to be much more of a workhorse, right? It's going to be a streaming mm-hmm. PC. There's going to be multiple. The thing's got six drive bays in it. I, no, it's got eight drive bays in it, including the two for the smaller ones for the SSDs. I won't be populating them all. Uh, I'll be water cooling it with the AIO, not like a custom water loop. And uh, it'll be fun. We'll, we'll do that tomorrow on stream. Damn, you're ready. That that building shit for the birds. I'd rather have On Air PC build mine. Check out On Air PC, our beloved, beloved sponsor. Right. But con- continuing on, Mr. Wilson, I haven't seen you in two fucking weeks either, man. I missed you. How how you been doing? I've been doing great, man. Uh, like I said, right before we went live, I feel like I've been playing uh, Destiny 2 like a full-time YouTuber, uh, but not making any content. I've just been playing it. Um, More money because of YouTube. We'll you guys get, just fire we'll up get... that stream, man, so we can hang out and play with you. I know, you know? man. Just fire it up. I know. Just hit the live we, button. Uh, it's right there. We, it's just uh... start streaming. It's right there. <laughs> One it's click. Some... <laughs> no excuse. You're really right, dude. Like no excuse at all. But like we're gonna we're, we're gonna have plenty of time to talk about Destiny. But uh, me, I've been getting ready for. I got a big music festival coming up. Uh, about anywhere from twenty to twenty five thousand people, and it's about four minutes down the road. So Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that's easy money. Getting ready for that, definitely. But dude, I found this new thing on Twitch that I've been really excited to tell you guys about. Um, it's called bit races. And um, I've told you guys about the randomizers before with video games. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Link to the Past and some popular games do randomizers where they randomize item locations and enemy locations. Whole new way for people to play the game. Well, they started these things called bit races where now chat can donate bits to interact with your in-game experience. So for instance, um, there was a race between two gentlemen doing Super Mario World for Super Nintendo, but it's called a Kaizo hack. Now, if you're not familiar with Kaizo, they're incredibly difficult Master Mario levels. I'm talking 
you got to grab a turtle shell, jump up, flick it against the wall, bounce it back, jump on it, catch another one, and do that like three times to get over certain parts. And mm. meanwhile, keeping that momentum the entire level. Like this is shit. this is next level shit. Well, on top of that, people could donate bits and then type a command in chat that would do things like, um, oh, I don't know, there was one called uh, uh, Airstrike, which would just send in tons of bullet bills from all kinds of directions in their game <laughs> while they were playing. You could add ice. You could add water physics. So imagine trying to run through a castle where all the stuff is coming down really fast from the ceiling, but you can only try to swim through, like... You could do. You could give them an item. You can uh, let's see. Uh, add items. Take time. Um, all different kinds of stuff. Is well, this today I discovered. Officially supported through Twitch. This is supported through Twitch, oh, and the, the way they do it is right now they're running it off emulators so that they could have it on their computer, mm -hmm. and it's basically hooked up to a network. But um, <clears throat> they're doing it in a way to where you could hook up like your. Um, your flash ROM cartridge uh, to your computer and stuff and play it right off a console, basically. And it's, it's connected to like a live network and there's zero latency. Uh, so you could sit there and wait for the perfect moment knowing that this guy has to make this big jump, donate bits for an ice effect. And as soon as he his character hits the platform, he just slides right off. And these, these ice effects last for like a minute. And uh, it's... It's really amazing. So today I saw one with Link to the Past. Uh, and this guy, um, his Twitch name is Andy. Just Andy. He got super just lucky. Andy. And yeah. it, just Andy. And uh, <clears throat> so he's one of the best speedrunners of the game. And people watch his streams enough to know like his route and what he has to do. And uh, you could do things like, uh, let's see, I got it written down here. Um, you could take a whole heart container away from him as if you never earned it if you donate a certain amount of bits what you could take you could take bombs you can add ice effects you can remove arrows rupees bombs magic so does this only work in a negative way against the player no 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 you can add buffs but like <laughs> what fun is that you want debuffs you want these these guys got world records you don't want wait them a minute to like if i'm in a race like if, let's say me and beastly were playing link to the past right, right. and you're yeah. racing on stream is my chat trying to hurt my chances? I, 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 would, yeah, yeah. I would hope they would yeah. help me out, man. Like, I no. need some help here. Go, no. you know, donate me some hearts. Give me the hearts. Give me the Master yeah. Sword. Go people give Beastly money and do. fuck him up. Not me. <laughs> hear me out. If you that guys were doing sense, a race, right? yeah. so, so they randomize the same file. So uh -huh. that they both have the same randomizer. Like they a just don't file kind of thing? The, the yeah, totally. So you upload the ROM. You randomize it, you copy the file, and send it to each of the players so that they have the same randomizer, but they yeah. haven't played it yet. Um, if Beastly was in first place, yeah, people might start helping you, Briar. You know what I mean? They might start doing shit to Beastly, but the moment that you get in the lead, they're going to Yeah, you would help me, you. right? You would help me. You got to... You gotta, I'm sure there's some... They're all like, the nah, Briar. To, you misunderstand our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want the race to end, you know what I mean? So they yeah. want to affect the player. Uh, for instance, uh, there there is a crucial spot that you have to check. It usually has a good item in a randomizer. There is logic. It won't lock you out. So there is like a natural progression areas that you want to check first and stuff like that. And uh, he had to bomb this wall when he knew that there was a good item on the other side of this wall and right as he was getting ready to pick up and throw a bomb someone donated and took 10 of his bombs away so he didn't <laughs> have one so he had to turn around start walking away got two screens away somebody gave him a bomb he went back up two screens went to bomb and somebody donated and took it away so they're just constantly trolling him like he's going around uh same thing with uh there's a spot where you have to go see Zora behind the waterfall and pay him 500 rubies uh -huh. to get an item. And right when he got up there, someone took 50 rubies from him and it was like oh, five minutes lost. Son you know of what a I bitch. mean? <laughs> yeah, it's super interesting. The whole time that the, the streamer's getting paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're getting sure. bits, you know, so it's worth your the, the this suffering. Is, this is a, yeah, this is a, it should be called the human suffering experiment and to yeah, see man. just how depraved your friends can be. It's so, like, your friends I, what I wanted you over. 
I would love to do this, right? Like, I would love to do this, but I wouldn't want to do it against Wilson because he knows that game inside and out. He right? sure I does. wanted to do it against a normie like me yeah. <laughs> who, who played Link a, to the um, Past in the 90s but hasn't really, doesn't right. really remember it. Maybe we should right. set something up, it's Beastly, down, with right? Wilson officiating. I'd be down for that. Yeah, I could commentate. Shit, I'd do it. I could commentate. Like right. you guys would have to do a couple practice runs. You guys would have to get through a randomizer run. So or maybe like, maybe we just do the randomizer run, but we just got to beat like two dungeons or something instead of like the entire you could, game. You could set it, okay? <laughs> so with Link to the Past, you can do um, first person to the Master Sword. You can do first person to kill uh, Aghanim and enter the Dark World. You could Some do of these fucking names. You could do I don't remember all the crystals. Sword. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> You could do all the crystals, or you could do the defeat Ganon the entire run. That's and hardcore. So you could break it down. So you could do like a small light world only randomizer. Yeah, you know that, that I mean? works. Dude, I like this idea. I really awesome. do. I think this would be fun. Even if we didn't do it with like. The Legend of Zelda? What yeah, whatever. Mark? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, man, it'd, be, it'd just be fun to like race against each other and have yeah, Wilson man. officiate it. <laughs> I'd love to commentate it too and be like, "Oh, we got, we got some route diversions here, folks." Like, we got... <laughs> I mean, we don't know where we're going. Like, yeah, exactly. I haven't played that game in fucking thirty years. <laughs> it has literally been that long too. I just fire it up and just do the three pendants and get to the dark world, reset, do it one or two more times, and then you're ready for the light world randomizer. You're good to go. Like, right, sure. sure. Um, but <laughs> if you guys. Anyone listening or you two would like to watch any of these guys do this stuff. Um, the guy that does a lot of uh, the Mario Kaizo randomizer hacks, his Twitch name is Grand Pooh Bear, just like it sounds. Grand <laughs> Pooh Bear. Uh, the guy that normally does Link to the Pass is Andy. Just Andy. And then there is... I want to watch Andy for sure, because Link to the Pass I got some love for. I'm going to yeah. look at him right now. There is a channel called Speed Gaming, Speed Gaming 2, Speed Gaming 3, and Speed Gaming 4. And a lot of these times, all four of these channels will go live at the same time Oops. and have these different races going. And it's community. You can sign up. If you're into that kind of stuff, you can sign up. You can get in there. And it's a lot of fun, man. It's really cool stuff to check out. So that was my week. <laughs> it, it, so it sounds very interesting. My week has yeah. been pretty similar to, I think, last week after I beat uh, God of War. I delved into... Shadow of the Colossus, the remaster on PS4. Uh, and, and immediately upon loading it up and playing it, my mind was taken back to a few months ago, maybe two months ago, we were speaking about this game. And one of the hosts said that this game looks like a PS2 game. And looking at my 4K monitor, my screen and playing the game, I want to reach through time and grab this person by his neck. Oh, there you are, Briar Rabbit. Don't you hey. ever talk about that fucking game like that again. That's one of the best looking <laughs> games I got in my goddamn library. Don't you ever say that shit again. Thug like cuz. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Have fun with your PS2 game. Uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> you must PS2 be tripping. Game. But, um, <laughs> No, but that yeah, game, uh, like it, it does look a lot better, right? It's, it's like I'm, I'm I, when I said that, runner. when I said that, it was off of the E3 footage, and that mm -hmm. E3 footage was like, you know, like streamed multiple times before I watched it. But I gotta say, even looking at like the real life footage, it definitely doesn't look like a modern game. It, the like, it looks great in 4K. They definitely did a good, nice job, like updating like the look of it. It looks more lush than it ever did before. The field of view is much bigger. But it's the emptiness and like the lack of you know like stuff Life. in it still reminds me of the PS2, and like I'd love to see them actually like make like a sequel to that game instead of a Let second or third quick, remaster. I but it doesn't look it still doesn't look like a native PS4 game to me. It totally does. You're wrong, but you know opinions are opinions like assholes. We can agree to disagree there. To me, it's one of the best looking PS4 games I have. My but asshole actually agrees with your opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so look, check it out. I was playing, you know, running around with Argo, my horse, in this game. And my kids, you know, Kate, they're watching. They're really into, you know, these bosses and stuff. And I looked at that world. And I was like, what if they populated this world like a Legend of Zelda? It would be the most amazing thing ever. 
they have the world made. It's just no enemies. And I guess at the time, it would have been too much to add that stuff. But yeah, the game is really incredible. Uh, and I'm probably halfway through it. My kids really want me to get back into it. And the rest of my week has been spent playing the new DLC from Destiny, Destiny 2 Warmind. And it's been uh, a, a lot of fun. Kate well, before, and I, We're going to talk. That's one of our topics. Yeah. But before know, you talk not, about not, Destiny. Yeah. I'm not going to talk, talk, talk about it. Other than to say that uh, I've spent quite a bit of time for the first time in a long time uh playing mm -hmm. destiny and really really in enjoying it in fact my daughters are, are now playing destiny on pc and uh they don't want to play it on console so i think that's really good for them uh nova nina nova seven nina's five and they're really getting around and and nova's probably about three or four hours into the game going through the campaign wow uh, she, really? she, she accidentally How old is nova now? Nova seven seven Time she'll, be flies, doing trials, right? she'll be doing trials. She ascended early. On. She accidentally stumbled into the crucible. <laughs> she'll be, and so she'll I'm be watching doing from here. Yeah, but <laughs> Kate and I are over there, you know, we're going through our shit on, on our destiny. I look over and I'm like, what are you playing? She's like, I don't know. I'm following this guy. And she's in the fucking crucible. And, and all of a sudden she's getting murdered. And I explained to her what's going on. She got the hell out of there. But that's been my <laughs> week. And uh, it's, well, I guess my, my last two weeks. For those who are new, to the show revolver live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics we go live every sunday at four o'clock p.m eastern at twitch.tv forward slash briar rabbit the video is then shared on youtube at briar, briar rabbit's youtube channel and my youtube channel beastly gamer if you're unable to see the live video feed or the audio or check out the audio podcast on uh itunes podbean or wherever you're doing your podcasting it's been two weeks i'm a little damn rusty uh and now on to another touchy subject that I wanted to announce for everybody out there. Uh, Gary Diaz, our beloved co-host, uh, has actually decided to step away from Revolver, uh, his own choice. It wasn't uh, any issue with us or Gary. It's just something he decided to do on his own. And we love Gary to death. We know you guys do as well. And uh, we don't know at this point whether or not Gary will be back sooner or later. Hopefully at some point uh, we'll see him again. But in the meantime, we love Gary. But we do have to revolve, and the show does have to go on. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I told him I was pregnant. I haven't seen him since. <laughs> I thought it was the fucking uh, the royal, I it was the he royal told, wedding. He told me he got that he got hired by Sony Interactive. He told every <laughs> one of us a different story. <laughs> what? He told me he got hired by Sony Interactive. He, he gave me his email address, Gary86, Gary Diaz86 <laughs> at Sony Interactive. <laughs> He gave me an extension to his number and everything. I don't even know if I want to. Call I heard he was number. working on the Yobo too. Listen, <laughs> yeah. say this, you know, for, for the people who don't talk to Gary on Twitter, uh, he's been, you know, really, really uh, excited about this royal wedding. He's been talking about it, and and I, I heard he was writing a blog about it, and then it finally happened. And so I don't know if he's following the royal wedding closely. Uh, I've actually <laughs> seen that in some of our topic, I mean, our I, comments as well. I watched the whole thing. I saw him three times in the crowd. Damn, Gary. He was the one jumping up and down all giddy, clapping. He was the flower girl. He was the flower girl, but he was, just, he was just handing out Vitas. He was just tossing Vitas <laughs> instead of flowers. Uh, Yo, but honestly, though, go ahead, listen. I was just going to say, in all seriousness, um, we do love you, Gary. We miss you. And... Uh, we understand that you had to step away and stuff, and I'm sure everybody else will. But uh, as we hope they get said, you back, if we don't get you back, we we'll love you anyway. We exactly. we always will, uh, and and that's from the heart. And so, just for anybody watching who's uh, maybe wondering, this, as I said, was completely up to Gary. Uh, there was no issue with any of us here. We love him to death, uh, and he decided to step away. So we are going to continue on with the show, and whatever happens, happens. But you guys know how Revolver is. I was so choked up, I fucked up my intro. But you guys know. I try. So we got a great show lined up for you guys this week. We well, some... I'd say it's it's above average. Why well, is it average? A... Average is a good word. I'm gonna average. go with average. No. On... no, I always ask. I mean, it's a little on the spectrum, maybe. Listen, uh, <laughs> look, the show your... is trying hard. <laughs> the show is trying its best. Yeah, well, I, I think we do that. Pretty well. Yeah, try hards a little bit, but you never want average. If you ever ask your woman anything and she says average. Yeah. Find another woman. Maybe a foot shorter. Man, she said, t said average. I'm like, oh, we got to marry her. Put a ring on that. <laughs> Would you say slightly above average? Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, look, if you can meet a woman, then you can change her favorite zoo animal from a giraffe to an anaconda. 
then you're moving in the right direction. So what about got... from like a caterpillar to a earthworm? <laughs> The earthworm's got length, but the caterpillar's got girth. You know, like, and it's fuzzy. I just have to say. <laughs> different colored. Plethora of colors as well. Look, the medical That's... condition, I'd rather not talk about it on air. That's some fucked up shit, Brian. Last night, uh, Kate and I went to uh, uh, Longhorn to have dinner. You know, we were celebrating our anniversary. And uh, no, we did the our, same our waiter, a waiter, this guy named Scott. Uh, he, I think he took a liking to me, and I didn't have any issue with it. He came and he got down real low, like on his knees to take our order. And, you know, I'm looking at the guy, talking, we're having a conversation. And he looked at me and said, are you just going to flirt with me right in front of her? I said, <laughs> I said, I said, we just saw Deadpool too, so sure. <laughs> and so we, we sat there and laughed and talked, and he, and he asked me my weight, and he told me about his weight because he used to do a ketogenic diet. And so I, I showed him, you know, I flexed my arm. Showed him the said, guns? He, he used a very peculiar word. And, he said, wow, you got so much girth. girth. And he said, oh, my God, that sounded so gay. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at him. I said, thanks. You were like, Uh-oh. you know they call me the Atlanta Anaconda, right? <laughs> <laughs> Scott. He said, please come back and visit. Uh, and, and the food was great. All right, so we got some great topics. I think we're going to lead with the big, big news of the last uh, 60 hours or so, right, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> 60 hours? Try... Geez, I wonder how many hours I've actually put in. I think I put sixty hours in before we went to the raid for the first time. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm infringing on like eighty to a hundred. God, ever since Warmind came out. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk I about Warmind, man. Like, quick question though, before you do that, I mentioned to Kate last night that uh, you, the podcast actually tried for the first time and failed on the first day of a new raid. And you guys, look at Briar. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it took you guys 12 hours and, until everyone had to bow out. Were you guys able to go back and relive this nightmare and succeed? Yeah, we even took a couple carries with us. We got um, a guy I've never heard of called Modern Tryhard and one of his clan buddies, I guess. I never heard of yeah. him before, but yeah, we helped them out too. They're hella casual. Hella casual. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening and who don't know who Modern Tryhard and Chevy are, they were part of the world's first raid team. They carried us hard. <laughs> Awesome. It was an awesome experience, man. So let, let's let's talk about Warmind a little bit. Um, I mean, first thing that you obviously jump into was the story. So I'd like to get everyone's take on the story um, and how I they felt about it. that. I, he didn't know, love it, huh? I, stories in Destiny, they're even at their best, they're different. not yeah. they're not great, right? And this one was okay. It was it could have been interesting. I was I was kind of getting a little bit excited about it because. There's a couple of touchstones in this story that are pretty pretty interesting to me as like somebody who watches like bife videos <laughs> but not right. actually actively engaged <laughs> in the lore of Destiny. Like Anna Bray is an interesting character because she's the first guardian that I know of that remembers who she was before she was reawoken by her ghost. And that that's interesting. Also she's part of the Bray company, Clovis Bray, which, you know, has all this history in Destiny. Uh, the Warmind is a very interesting character in is Destiny. It a character? Yeah, he's been in. I mean, he's he was in Destiny One a lot, and he was in the Grimoire a lot too. Um, he he is interesting to me, and his like at the end when you kind of get to talk to the Warmind, I thought that was the best part of the story because it was it was very interesting what he said. But there's no build up. There's no lead to it. Uh, other characters like Nocris and Zul or Zul or whatever his name is felt very kind of forced in there. Zul. Mm. <laughs> 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 um, and like even Anna Bray, I, I think somebody told said that she basically felt like the red key where her basically her whole function in the campaign of Destiny or in the Warmind is to open one door. Hmm. Yeah, so, you know what? You're absolutely right. Um, you know, it it was better. It. I'll say it's better than the Osiris campaign. Nice. Right? Oh, but it still wasn't great. Like it was it was fine. So yeah, I, I, I kinda got I, I I agree with Brian there uh wholeheartedly. For us, Kate and myself, the Destiny stories have never been, you know, magnificent, you know, on the edge of your seat with suspense. Uh, they've always kind of taken a backseat to the excitement of the play. 
to, to the moments that you're having with people, to the situations you find yourself in. But I really did uh, enjoy the story a, a lot more than the, the last DLC, uh, for sure. And I thought that some of the enemies, they had changed it up so much compared to what we had seen in the past. You know, we kind of saw regurgitated uh, enemies and animations from previous DLCs for forever. And it's like now with Warmind, they finally put something fresh in the game and it made it feel and breathed new life into it for me. But as Briar said, I, I thought the story was okay, you know, as far as Destiny goes. Uh, but it wasn't anything that just, you know, you're on the edge of your seat super excited about. So my opinion on the story is... If you don't know, if you didn't pay any attention to Destiny 1 lore about Anna Bray, Clovis Bray, Rasputin, anything like that, you're not really going to get anything out of the story. Um, I wouldn't call myself maybe as much like a lore nut, but I'm... I would. I love the, the lore, man. It's it's very interesting. It's super nerdy, and I love it. Um, what I got out of it was... Uh, Rasputin had this big mystery surrounding him. Is he the last war mind? Does he have control over other war minds? Have we been communicating with him on Earth? Come to find out his core mind has been on Mars the entire time, and we've been interacting with old fragments of Rasputin. So pieces that Rasputin technology he had gotten into and just kind of left a fragment of him behind. You know what I mean? So I feel like it was a very definitive uh, part of the story that Rasputin basically woke up and said that he's going to defend humanity on his own terms and he has no equal and all this stuff. I don't know. The, the ending was very frightening, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of yeah, like... no spoilers, but he basically is a god. Yeah, he he's, he's, basically, a god. he's basically fucking Skynet. Right? Basically. He thinks he's <laughs> a god. And, like, it sounds to me like he thinks he's, like... I mean, this is obviously a spoiler, guys. <laughs> He thinks he's like up there with the traveler, right? Or, mm -hmm. or superior to the traveler, That's which the is very interesting to me, right? It's like, because mm -hmm. this is to me setting up that at some point we're going to have to fight the Warmind, right? He's going to be that rampant a AI yeah. that, you know, Bungie's so fond of pitting us up against. Yeah, it was cool. Um, Nacris and Zol, eh, I kind of feel like they could have done something more with that. I mean, Nacris is a hive god who has a brother who's a hive god, who has a father and aunts that are hive gods. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're seeing the trend here. You know what I mean? It's a family of gods. Yeah. And I kind of feel like they did him a little shy on the end story mission or whatever. And granted, Zol was the weakest of the worms. So, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. I just, yo, did you guys get some tremors kevin you, Bacon said, you said he was the weakest of the worms like, <laughs> did you say yeah. he was the weakest yes he was the weakest of them so it, it doesn't really surprise me that you know we whooped that ass you know pretty I'll good i'll be honest but, like, though i like both of the strikes that those those two i know a lot of people are like they should have been raid bosses it should have been grander I, I i guess i kind of agree with that i'm not as invested in the in the lore as you guys as wilson you are but like, I like to watch Violin Games videos. I like to watch Bite videos. You know, it's interesting. It's just, like, I don't ever get any of this shit when I'm playing the game, though. Like, uh, all the shit you just said, that's not, that has, was not portrayed it's, to me while I was yeah, playing. Yeah, so right. I'm saying. You gotta be, you gotta be into it, man, because when I was playing Destiny 1, when we were all playing Destiny 1, I think yeah. we all had the general consensus of, what the fuck is Rasputin? Where is Rasputin? Yeah. And why isn't he... But, interacting but with Wilson, us you know a, major what I mean? a majority of players aren't hardcore most people aren't going to get the memo sure. that you have to go to another source to get you know background details about characters that were never expounded on in the game and never really fleshed sure. out kind of like They're the marvel movies where some people go watch them casually and don't give a shit about the backlog and the history and they might walk away entertained but might have a few questions about things Whereas you guys are going, oh no, this crossover but, in this but universe. But this is very can't. different, though, because it, it, uh, it the is, Marvel, Marvel is, movie started off as a comic book, it so did. you already had the foundation. Uh, Destiny started off as a video game, and then they want you to go online to to research and find all these things later. Most people buy a video game and they expect it to be all one centered, specific experience. Yeah, but it's the they, same thing of like, you know, not a lot of people read those comics growing up. I mean, I can guarantee you that a I, massive percentage of people didn't read those comics growing up. Like, I, I didn't read I Guardians know. of the Galaxy. 
Like, I didn't you know read that. I mean? Like, I, saw I didn't the movie. either. But I saw that movie, and I like I knew who these characters were from watching the movie. Not, like, I didn't need to go read comic books or go on to like a wiki to to learn about these characters. I I felt like I got a complete story from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, I feel I like I got else. character arcs from the movie. Mm-hmm. I did not get a character arc for Anna Bray. That's 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 fair enough. But I'm I'm just saying like. It's there. The story and some of the answers are there. Yeah. You just got to put a little bit of time and effort into it, which is not what people want. I get that. Yeah. I'm totally okay with putting down Destiny and while I'm doing something else, learning up on the lore behind Destiny. And if I want to listen to Bife's video, if I'm doing the dishes, if I'm at work blowing glass or at, in the car on the way home, click that watch later thing. I'm with you. you. Like, I like that that stuff's there, but they need to do a better job of telling a coherent story when they do a campaign. In, in Even it's going to be short like that, two and a yeah. half hours, three hours. Like, they got to they gotta get better at telling that but, story. Or maybe, maybe what they need to do is pull back a little bit on the epicness, right? Instead of having Anna Bray, Knockers, uh, Zool, and the war mind all be parts of this. Maybe you just want to focus on Anna Bray, right? You know, and yeah. give her a full two and, and a half hours, yeah. you know, because well, I feel like it was rushed. You know what I mean? Like Rise of Iron did a good job of telling you, in my opinion, what was happening, what was going yeah. on. Yeah, that House was of one. Wolves was a little short. It kind of suffered the same thing as this expansion, in my opinion. Um, it was it was good, but forgettable the story it was yeah. forgettable it's the stuff that happened up until you find out what's been going on with Res- rasputin and yeah, stuff rasputin like that was definitely the best part yeah clovis bray you could touch on that for 10 expansions and barely scratch the surface of clovis bray but i'm in I mean, agreement it yeah, was clovis bray basically if you don't know clovis bray is also the company that created the exos so and there's actual like lore like hidden in the grimoire do you know what the grimoire mm-hmm. is yeah it's actually in game okay, now the Grimoire, is it I in the game now? It. It's in yeah. game. When you you can go through a lost sector and um, activate the terminals, and it says, "Do you want to know more?" And then That's you awesome. click on it, and it tells you. It goes on like a five seven minute tangent about Exo awesome. lore. I didn't know that. Okay, so and that was yeah. the question so I was going Kate to ask. Six is one of the, was made in Exo by the Bray family. So like in that, I was I was hoping they would go into that because Kate Six is such yeah. an interesting character. You know, Anna Bray was introduced, uh, you know, but there's so much they can do with that stuff. It, it's always disappointing when they don't. Do you think yeah. that it would be beneficial to to the the audience, to to the fan base, or just to the base of Destiny in general to have like a bestiary and, or, or maybe uh, mm. an, an in-game glossary of characters and worlds and, and situations For and sure. history? 100%. that people could, You know, it, it'd be nice if like while your friends are in the tower, you can click on and, and find all this stuff just in game shows pictures and events of things that yep. may have happened and lost worlds. And, and, and I, what I want basically to be honest with you is I want them to improve their storytelling in game. Like, absolutely. I, I feel like they need to do that, but I also want them to bring back the grimoire from destiny Two, from destiny. One. One. Yeah. But I want them to make that accessible in the game. I'd like in to see game. it on the, a website that's accessible, like from a computer. Like, I like that, but I also want it to be in the game, accessible in game, maybe from a kiosk, and then randomly put up cards while you're like loading. Yeah, you can so read you... a little bit while you're loading too, yep. and learn See, a little I, I, bit about the world while you're while you're loading from screen to screen. For me, as someone who's never, you know, really visited the, the Grimoire, I've only played the game, the game as it was presented when I bought it. Playing the game with someone like Wilson is like a wealth of knowledge. He tells me things. Uh, I remember we were talking about uh, Destiny 1. He was telling me about kind of the landscape and what was out there and how it got there. And I was like, wow, that's really amazing. It would be nice for everybody who's playing the game maybe to have a Wilson and say, well, open up this and read about it. Or just have it in game. Click so it's, here, it's, yeah, so you can see that much more happened. immersive. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, know? that's really important. It kind of it kind of segments the audience. You got some people who know a ton of information because they want that extra mile outside of game to learn about it, and you got people who are just playing the game and have no clue who the hell these people are. So, I mean, that's my point of view on it. All right, let's move on from the story. Um, once you're done with the story, you start doing your end game activities, right? Is you start the level grind. The level grind is a little different this time as they kind of took mm. away strikes as a way to level up, which was 
you know, one of the primary ways to level up. Now it's really focused on doing your milestones and running uh, the Leviathan raid and the first raid lair, right? It's like, if you're not running the, the raid in the raid lair to level up your character, it's going to take you forever because it's like thir three quarters of your leveling up is done through the raids, right? The milestones, what you get, like you can get like six or seven powerful engrams by doing your milestones. Mm -hmm. And then you can get like 20 something from the raids. Thanks Willie. Cause Willie's going to be helping me out with that stuff. Absolutely. Oh my God. Like, you... So it's, it's so different. <laughs> like you've got to, um, like Briar said, uh, usually you do the story, you get to the soft cap, you jump into strikes, you get legendaries, you get blues, you get exotics, you get to raid level, raid day, you go in, you stomp it out, you get out. Uh, this was a completely different experience. Um, we hit that, we hit that soft cap pretty damn quick. I had yeah, a lot of soft tokens. cap is like 340 or 345. Yeah, 340, 345, and it is a freaking grind, man. So what we were doing was we were doing all of our milestones but not turning them in. Then we would go do the Nightfall, get that drop, equip it. We'd go do the raid. Every drop or engram we got at the raid, we would <coughs> stop what we were doing, go to the tower, turn it in, infuse it, go to the next encounter, get a higher drop. Then we'd do Prestige. Then we'd do the challenge. Then we'd go do the raid layer. Then we'd go back to the regular Leviathan, use our keys to open up all the chests in the underbelly and get engrams and go turn those in. And we're talking, that was like a 12 hour day for like one character to get all that shit Jesus. done. And that maybe got us up to like 360, three, 365, something yeah. like that. Same. So we go in. Uh, on raid day, and we're like, we are good to go, man. 365, and you know, noon, noon rolls around. You know, new raid layer is available. We click on it. Recommended power level 380, and we're all in the 360s. And they just changed the delta. Yeah, they just changed the delta scaling for you know, like damage and defense, depending on how mu how much light you have, uh, power level. And uh, we went into the raid and. I mean, we got through the first couple of encounters pretty quickly, man. But when you get to the end and you hit that 380 light level cap and everything has a red bar with a red sword or a skull on it, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, it was tough. I got to say, though, I loved every fucking minute of it. It's, it's fucking hard as hell, Beastly, especially if you're underleveled. But once you get to a high enough level, like if you hit 371, you all of a sudden, you can one-shot enemies with a hand cannon. You know, you can clear out the ads pretty quickly and what it becomes is it's mechanic heavy, but the mechanics all keep everybody moving and thinking and rushing around and communicating in a way that it's very fun, at least at the outset. You know, like, I thought that about King's Falls, the last fight in King's Fall. Remember uh, Oryx, where, Ugh. you know, when we first completed Oryx, when he would drop those bombs, we were running around in circles <laughs> while he was dropping the bombs right so like things change over time <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know like strategies evolve for these raids but right now it's a lot of fun um it's not as visually stunning as the last raid layer the last raid layer hit it out mm. of the park it was just like you'd never seen anything like it in destiny this one looks very much like the leviathan but the the fun factor is pretty damn high i don't know the, the, i'll agree with you the it was very, like, when you first load in, it was very cool. You're on top of the Leviathan. You literally have this amazing skybox. Then you kind of go down inside, and you're like, okay, this is the Leviathan. And uh, there's an instance where you get launched back up into space, and it is one of the most beautiful encounters in the game that I've probably ever seen uh, when you get launched into space. It's pretty dope. Uh, but there's a couple other things. The raid was cool. Uh, I want to talk about your favorite gear, uh, Masterwork, Exotic, Catalyst. Have you guys been getting any? Uh, what what stands out as your favorite? Brian, I, I think haven't I already know what your favorite a catalyst is. Catalyst, yeah. I have not completed an Exotic Catalyst yet. I think I know what your favorite Exotic is right now, though. Yeah. That's got to take a guess. Yeah. Darcy. Darcy's fucking awesome. You love that, sni <laughs> you love that sniper? Oh my um, god, it does. Ooh. So Darcy's thing, when you lock on to an enemy, you do four X damage. Four it times. Is, really? Yeah, you just mow down bosses. And if you're doing a strike playlist right now, they added the strike modifiers to, to the heroic strikes. 
and there's one I think it's called heavyweight. Is that right? Where you get more heavy ammo drops and your heavy ammo does more damage. You can just plow through anything with that Darcy, man. You just the, the that worm god boss. You easily one phase him. He's down in, if you got three guys with Darcy's, he's easily down in like three to ten seconds. It's like so fast. That thing is badass. Yeah, I got it. And it's it's like high level for me right now. I haven't even used it because I haven't really fucked with snipers. Yeah, on they, console. they also they also made an improvement to snipers recently. So if you didn't like snipers before, it's worth giving them another shot. Yeah, yeah now the, my favorite weapon right now uh is not even from this DLC, but Sins of the Past. That mm. rocket launcher is so amazing, so powerful, man. It just obliterates rooms full of ads. Yeah. You know, it and, and that's rocket. really that's been my go-to now for like at tough spots, you know, just jump back and let it loose because uh, up on the first explosion, you guys know you get a secondary explosion and lots of times oh. that secondary will clear out whatever's left. So that's been yeah. really my go-to. You guys like the new Soros that everybody got from Zero? I, I like it in Crucible. Um, when it starts spinning up in Crucible, it's really good. My favorite exotic so far is a toss up between Borealis and Graviton Lance. Um, both for crucible reasons. Um, everyone said it was going to be a pain in the ass to figure out what the other team was running when they had their super up and stuff like that. We get all that information in competitive. So if you go into competitive and you pick up a Borealis that has the masterwork on it, if you break a corresponding enemy's shield, so if, if an arc strider is coming at you and you hit him with an arc bullet and it breaks their shield, you basically have the ability to one shot body shot everyone with every bullet in your mag currently. Um, so in competitive, you shit. see, oh, Arc Strider's got his super up. <laughs> Switch your shit to Arc, sit there, wait for him to pop it, hit him with it, and after that, the rest, there's no timer on it. The rest of your magazine, as long as you don't reload, will one-shot body shot Guardians in the Crucible. That's fucking That's crazy. unbelievable. I'm surprised Briar hasn't jumped all over that one. It's that's very it hard. Well, <laughs> Borealis is a PlayStation exclusive one, so that's why Briar hasn't jumped all over oh, that one. Oh, man, that's fucking crazy. Um, a lot of people said it was, I mean, it's tougher to pull off in quick play because you don't have those super notifications when people have their super up. Um, but other than that, Graviton Lance. Um, I hated it day one. It pissed me off. That's all I was getting murked by, and... If you can't beat them, join them. So I've been pairing Antiope with Graviton Lance and a nice combo. shitting on everything left and right. Close range, medium range, long range. That setup has you covered. Um, it's been a lot of fun, man. Uh, the Crucible is freaking insane right now with a lot of these exotics, and you don't know if they got Masterwork on them. And Yo, it's, have cr you, it's fresh. Have you checked out the, uh, the new competitive playlist at all? I have. I have been doing some comp. Um, I started out with a huge grind um, to Valor just to kind of get a new feel for the... Yeah. I wouldn't call it a meta change. I would call it a meta shift, maybe a shuffle, maybe not quite a change. Um, but I got to rank four in quick play, and I just started diving into competitive, and I okay. dove in with some friends who are already rank three. So literally, I've been tossed into the fryer my first couple of games which is right. some of the sweatiest people um it's cool <clears throat> i will say i wish there wasn't a win streak in quick play i yeah. do not i do not like the win streak in quick play it makes people play like it's competitive i had four games that went within one point of each other in a row and i don't I've even know if i want that. there to be like a ranking system in quick play yeah like i kind of want the the ranking system in quick play to be maybe if it's if it's there it's time based only like you get the same amount for winning a lot exactly and it really doesn't matter it's just how much you play exactly but yeah I, like i want quick play to be an actual casual playlist it's oh sweaty, also Everyone... by the way speaking of uh crucible my actual favorite exotic right now is the boop cannon the tractor cannon <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous right now it's so much fun it it still does what it used to basically like, you know, it kind of it acts as a shotgun and also like pushes an enemy away from you. But now it also, um, it allows you to do extra damage against enemies if you're using void. And it also takes away their ability to use any abilities. Suppresses so, them. 
yeah, it suppresses them. So they can't double jump. They can't throw grenades. They can't use their super. They're just like sitting ducks. And like, if you push them <laughs> off a cliff, they can't even double jump to get back on the cliff. Yep. Oh my God. It's become without a doubt. My favorite suit, my favorite, uh, exotic. Such in the a crucible. Scumbag. Dude, <laughs> like this guy's coming at you with a super. You're just like, boop. And he's just like, he, he doesn't know what to do. He's like, I was just about to fucking. <laughs> it's so much fun. Dude. It is a lot of fun. It's really fun in PVE as well. Uh, yeah. You could tether a group of enemies on that at the end of that Zol encounter when he spawns in ads. If you tether all of them and boop one of them, the tethered group gets propelled oh, with them. Yeah. And you can knock like an entire group of ads off the That's edge awesome. and like it, it's a lot of fun man it it's crazy dude before. i gotta try these it's these fun oh. beastly you also get a ton of ammo with it it's like i think the max it holds is like 18 or 19 rounds or something like that it's a lot of rounds and so you can just kind of keep using it throughout a strike or throughout you know while, while you're playing as opposed to like rockets where you feel like you got to conserve those rockets right it's fun damn yeah awesome. it's a good time man so well, over good, guys to actually be talking about destiny 2 and Dude, there's stuff to do. There's stuff to grind for. Like, hear me out. If you were an engaged player before and you were still casually logging in, this is a great expansion for you. There's so if much you, stuff I haven't even done yet, Wilson. If you're, I know, same, dude. I'm thinking every day, how am I going to spend time in Destiny? And I haven't thought of like that since Destiny 1. But like, if you're one of those players that wants a change to weapon systems, weapon randomization, that stuff's not coming till fall. If right. you are over Destiny, have been over Destiny, this is not an expansion for you. It's time to play a different game. Yeah, wait <laughs> till know, September. Like, if you if you want to see big changes, wait till September. Yeah, exactly. But I will say, like, if you are playing Destiny, if you're enjoying Destiny, they added so much things to do. There's, you know, there's grinds, there's secrets. I think there's going to be more secrets revealed, to be honest with you. Um, there's like, there's, we didn't even talk about escalation protocol, which I think it's they need hard. to expand upon because it is mega fun. I haven't even, like, I've just not had time to devote to it yet, but B Wilson and who was with us? Hero? Hero. Hero. Hero of time, Hero of time 39, not 38. Like we all wanted to see, but 39. <laughs> 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 uh, we got in there. I think we had one or two blueberries. So we only had five people, but and we got through three rounds of it. I honestly think that they could make a raid out of something like that because it's just so much fun to have like hard ass enemies trying to kill you. Right. <sighs> As opposed it's to, I like cool. raids and I like how they're very mechanic. They've gotten more and more mechanic heavy. But there's just something fun about in Destiny 2 about just having a ton of fucking badass enemies coming at you and your fire team and just trying to survive. And the Escalation Protocol, I think... You think they could do a raid like that? I think they could at least do an encounter in a raid where it's yes. just like there's just a fucking shitload of badass enemies and you just got to survive through it. Because that's a very... Yeah, you're right. It's very fun. Uh it's extremely hard. Oh my god! I would I mean, like that, that, that a, adds to the fun too. I love the heavy mechanics with fighting, but I would love just a light mechanic, uh, more gunfight focus. One encounter in a raid, so it's there are a couple mechanics you can't just like camp in a corner and shoot shit with a sniper rifle or whatever. You do have to kind of move around, but I would like that in a raid of an escalation protocol sense of. Uh, we got to do this. Now we got to go over here and kill these guys. And we got to stand on this plate, kill these things while they're over there, you know, doing something similar, maybe break you off into two teams of three on separate areas of the board. And it'd be dope. I'd yeah. be down with it, man. I'd like escalation to see expand upon it. Yeah. Escalation protocol is very cool. I'd definitely like to see him expand upon it. Like Wilson said, but the fact that there's not matchmaking for that, or, and there's no mm. way to get a fire team of six in it is debilitating for that. It yeah. is debilitating. The fact that you can only load three people into a three patrol. Three people, yeah. And, like, you have to rely on basically hacks to get other friends in there is crushing for that for that activity. Mm -hmm. It's just crushing. Like, it's just too bad. The, uh, so, overall, what do you guys think? About I love DC it. It's the best version of Destiny 2 we've gotten. So uh, it's far. it's it's a ton of fun. Uh, I'm I'm actually playing it, and looking forward to playing more of it. Kate's super hyped about it. Um, and this is what we like about Destiny. Whenever 
they release something new. It breathes new life into something that, you know, becomes mundane and becomes old over time and makes it fresh again. It's like the only game on a console that can do that for us. So, um, or PC, if you're a PC gamer, it's really fun. I'm, I'm really, really loving it. All right, let's, let's move on. Anybody else got any thoughts? Wilson? Awesome. I want to hear about the next damn topic because y'all been talking to me about this shit on Twitter and I'm trying to get hyped. He's like, y'all been talking about this shit for like four fucking years. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, hold the hell on. I want to hear about Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai! No mercy! There's no mercy in this dojo! (laughs) It it kicks ass. Dude, it's it's so good. Yeah, No spoilers, because I haven't seen any of it, but... We're uh, going to do no spoilers here. We're going to... I'm not going to say anything that you wouldn't get from watching the trailer on YouTube. Real quick. I'll try. Real quick. Just to set it up. Cobra Kai is a new series. It's a television series. It's a 30-minute ep- per episode series. Uh, it's only being shown on YouTube right now. I think there's probably different ways to pirate it or whatever. But it's basically, it takes Johnny and Danny, Daniel, from the first Karate Kid movie, 30 years in the future, present time, so it's 30 years has passed, and it kind of just joins in with both of their stories. Present That's day. Crazy. It I and I gotta say, like as stupid as that sounds, it's so fucking good. If you so, liked that old movie, the old karate yeah. kid movie, Cobra mm-hmm. Kai is for you. It's amazing. I legit saw the preview for it. And it was like, this is going to be so cringy. This is going to be <laughs> such a guilty pleasure that the only people I'm going to want to tell about it are going to be Sam and the Revolver crew. <laughs> and like, <laughs> it's going to be a guilty pleasure kept on the hush. You know what I mean? But, dude, I had the exact opposite effect. Like, uh, the, uh, what was his name? Uh, Johnny? Not Johnny. The What was the, the, the blonde-headed kid's name in Karate Kid? Johnny. It was Johnny. Johnny. Okay, yeah. yeah. He is such a relatable person like it's so relatable the bad day that you know the bad days that he has you know what i mean that was me every day throughout my 20s waking up drinking a beer going to work and having a shitty day you know what i mean like that was that was it it was very relatable um what they kind of spin in the trailer is they kind of make daniel larusso out to kind of be the d-bag this time around like kind of like that's kind of the way that they portray him at first like that he's this big successful guy and Johnny's like, you know, the lower class hard worker, you know, scraping change and stuff like that. And the vibe that I kind of got from it was that he's Danny kind of became a douchebag in my opinion. Like he, I wouldn't say became the person that he hated, but they definitely kind of portray him as like this almost over successful person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's the vibe that you got, but for sure, man, like the game or the game, uh, the (laughs) movie, The show is NES game. <laughs> there's no like good guy or bad guy in the show. If you're looking at Danny and right. you're looking at at Johnny, Johnny. I've only watched the first. I, th- I want to say five or six episodes. I'm very early in the. There's like 23 episodes. I think Wilson's early on. BC, you haven't seen it yet. It's these characters are more complex than they, they were when they were teenagers, right? They have oh, yeah. life experiences now. Johnny, you know, yeah, Families? he was a bully when he was kid. Uh, now he's had life experience. He still has the teachings of the Cobra Kai dojo, <laughs> you know. But he's, you know, he's an adult now. You know, he's he's seen life. Danny, you know, still has the teachings of Mr. Miyagi, but he's also got a family. He's got responsibilities. He's got a successful business, you know. And like, both characters make dumb decisions. Both characters make very redeemable decisions. It's very easy for me to be rooting for both of these characters. Both of them, okay, wow. Even though, you know, they're mortal enemies, right? And they have so been they're, since they're they were They're both teenagers. relatable. They're... Yeah. And I'm not, you know, some of the acting kind of gets a little cringy, especially when you have kids involved. I'm going to say the guy who plays Johnny, there's something about him, man. Like, he's not a great actor, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say, but he, he doesn't... He, I think he's putting him, enough of himself into the character that you just kind of you, you just love him, you know? Like, yeah, he, I can't believe this. He's yeah, very man. handsome too. He's very, he's handsome, very handsome. The guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good looking guy. Is he is he more handsome than James Franco? 
I would say he's more handsome mature. than James Franco. You can't really compare the two. James Franco's got that baby face. This guy's the older, <laughs> scruffier, a little salt and pepper action going on. Like, you know, it, uh, dude, it's, if you guys haven't seen it, YouTube Red, um, I think you could try it free for your first month. So if you wanted to, you could sign up, power through it, cancel yeah. your subscription. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure you can try so this it. This would be like the first thing on YouTube, YouTube Red worth actually get this hundred percent a hundred percent i've i mean i've really? attempted to do youtube red because i've done youtube you know for a living more or less for mm -hmm. a long time and to not have ads pop up every time i want to watch a youtube video always seemed appealing but i was like fuck you youtube i'm not giving you any of my money because you know you've been a fucking d-bag since the get-go yeah. <laughs> but this is Absolutely. the first time i finally clicked that button okay I, you know this is this is good enough content that i want to watch that i'll i'll pay you you guys have convinced me I will have some feedback on this Cobra Kai uh, by next week for sure. I right, well, at least get... Maybe we'll revisit again then next week because I'm sure I'll have finished the series by then. 100%. Oh, wow. I'm probably gonna yeah. I'm probably going to try to finish it up tonight if I don't get too distracted with Warmind. All <sighs> right, so the next topic is, is going to be a pretty fun one, and we can keep it brief because I don't know about you guys, but I haven't spent the last couple of months really thinking about this event that's going to take place in a very few short weeks. E3 is upon us, and uh, it's right around the corner. And I know lots of gamers out there are really excited about the offerings and uh, the revelations that will come from this conference. And I want to know, and of course, Mr. Wilson would like to know, or as we call him, Sweet Dick Willie. I'm sorry, comments. They got on me earlier. They said, don't call him Wilson. Sweet Dick <laughs> Willie. Oh my We're going to have to have uh, TN Muggle change the nameplate. I, I apologize, <laughs> Mr. Sweet Dick. Sweet Dick Willie. <laughs> but, uh, oh my goodness. What, can you change your Twitch name, please, Wilson? <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. Sweet Dick yeah, Willie. Yeah, yeah. You could do that, right? Like, for free. It's like you, after a month, you could change it back if you wanted to or something like I that. Don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, that'll be rough because then what if somebody takes Wilson 309 to, yeah, when I have yeah, Sweet Dick Willie? You just You're going to have to just set up a spoof account. Just, set up a spoof account. Just set up a second say, account. I'm going to have to set up a second account and make Do it some now cameos. before somebody does it before you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are the guys who will pay to fuck you over when you're uh, speed running the game. So just do it now before any of them decides to fuck you over for free. But, um, Real quick, we could run through it uh, just in case you guys haven't been thinking about it. What are some of the predictions you you got, or something you might be excited to see uh, this this year at E3? And you guys let us know in the comments. I want to actually mention what you guys say below. So start commenting on Twitch. All right, I'll um, go first here. I'll go, yes, I'll go first, please. I'm very interested to see what's going to be with going on with Anthem. I expect they're going to show that. Um, oh. I have heard. I, I believe that Borderlands 3 is off the table. Like, they have come out and said, we're not showing Borderlands 3 this year. I call bullshit. Oh, really? really? You think so? Bullshit. Yeah. Because oh, you, think don't, you don't go into a four-page post talking about why people psychologically think that Borderlands 3 is going to be at E3. But you think it say, might be there? Dude, that dude went on a four-page Twitter <laughs> tangent post this is about Randy why people Pitchford, think it's that's, right. Is that's, his name? Yes, that's the type of shit he does. He is the biggest troll of the video gaming industry. Really? I call one hundred percent bullshit that it'll be there. Oh. It'll be there. Now you, you got you me excited again, Wilson, because I really want Borderlands Three to come out this and, year. And that credit oh, goes out to my buddy Marcus, Mr. Tom Foolery, who came up with that because he pays attention to that very well. And he's I think he said it best. He said, either you say you're not gonna be there or you're gonna be there. You don't put out this big giant post about why people think that you're gonna be there. You know what I mean? I they're notorious for doing that shit. And I do believe when the pre sequel was announced at E three. They also said they weren't gonna be there that year either. Did they really? <laughs> yes. So they got a history of this. All right. I didn't know that, man. Now I'm, I'm excited calling. to see some Borderlands 3. Oh, God. Yo, right. That game so, will blow. Oh. After the announcement of Rage 2, I am very excited to see Rage 2 as well. That game, I mean, that hit a lot of pleasure zones for me, as Wilson likes to say. Like, you know, it, <laughs> it definitely had some silliness to it. It looked like it had fun guns. It looked like it had just like, you know, chaotic awesome gunplay so i'm very interested to see what that's gonna be were, were any of you surprised at that revelation i was very two? surprised i, was very I didn't surprised. think that would ever happen so yeah. I mean, it just goes to show that some developers they listen to their audience there was a, a very avid group of players who loved that game many people panned it 
but to me, I was really shocked to see it. And of course, uh, this new race looks amazing too, Brian. That looks like a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and also, Destiny expansion, the September expansion, I fully expect is going to be revealed. You think so? that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. I would say I'm positive about it. Right? It's like they're going to reveal the expansion at E3. You know, they'll give us a little teaser trailer, uh, and then I'm sure Bungie will talk about it after the after that teaser trailer as well. So I. I fully expect to see, you know, the September expansion, at least story-wise, what it's going to be about. So you you had mentioned uh, Anthem, Briar. What are you what yeah. are you kind of hoping with Anthem, man? Like I know looter shooter, obviously, but like what are you what are you looking to get out of Anthem, man? Maybe something that when I'm hoping they really kind of lean into RPG mechanics and make it, you know, like a a deeper kind of so like a, similar to what the division became later on in its life but you know in a world that doing dps actually makes sense <laughs> because the division the disconnect for the division for me was it had so many cool things but it never made sense that i'd shoot a guy 10 times in the face with a sniper to do dps like it was just this weird like disconnect for me and that game got a lot better you're right i'd like to see like a more fantasy based version of the division but also made by you know the guys who made mass effect like that could be very cool and i am down for another like open i'd, I'd like it to also see it be more open world than destiny i'm not saying like fully open world like a skyrim but right. bigger environments more exploration uh more character more story like i'd really like to see something like that out of anthem <laughs> Have they announced, like, are we going to be able to, like, have fire teams and stuff like that? I believe obviously. so, yeah. I believe uh, so. That'd be dope, man, because I'd really like to explore that universe with you guys. It'd be fun. Yeah. I love yeah. that. What's around this corner? You know, it looks like you could do a lot of, like, jumping around and flying around and shit like that. So that uh, it could be pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty excited about that. For me, Borderlands 3 is at the top of my list, dude. I love that annoying-ass little robot claptrap, dude. He is the <laughs> cutest thing in the I'm world. Dancing. I'm dancing. I'm I, I want one so I who does that whoa 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 that dubstep when he's doing that. It's like look, I'm making music. Like he's so I love Claptrap. As annoying as he is, he's adorable and I want one in real life. Who um, said he's annoying? What the hell is wrong with that? He is, he's uh, annoying. The internet he's a, at large. <laughs> he's adorably Claptrap. annoying. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh but the um did you say division two? Did you say that at all, Brian? No. Ooh, no. Division two, man, and here's why. I'm hoping for a fresh start. I'm hoping for, like Briar was saying, that there's a little bit more of a connect instead of a disconnect between why the hell the guy in this starter jacket has like 50 layers of Kevlar, like, you know, and it's just this cheap little starter jacket. Like, you got that thing from Goodwill. You ain't, you know, it's not it's stopping, it ain't stopping bullets, fam. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, Division two would be cool. Um, I'd like to see him. I could be totally wrong about this. I might get some hate for this, but I'd kind of like to see that virus go, I don't know, like make human beings like feral, like really aggressive. You know what I mean? I don't think, that way. I, I don't think they could do that just because of that Tom Clancy license. Mm. Like, I think it's got to be based yeah. in. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> but that's why I, I, I talked about that a little bit. It was a long time ago, but I was, with the Division 2, I'd love to see him just ditch the Tom Clancy license. Yeah, totally. Ditch Tom Clancy, <laughs> come to Chicago. We could do some funky shit in Chicago, man. Like, it'd be really cool because uh, I think it was, like, Mesa Sean was saying that, like, he recognized a few places in the game because him being from New York, you know, or whatever. Really? Like, some places look familiar, you know, and I'd love if they went to Chicago and I could be like, damn, this is the place, you know, I saw Sound Tribe or Pretty Lights, you know, and, like, you know, that's the uh, the Congress, or not in St. Louis, the, um, I forget the name of the place that has the concerts in Chicago, but it'd be really cool, man. I'd be down with it. Um, I think uh, we're going to see, like, probably some more, like, Smash Brothers uh, stuff from Switch. Nintendo. Oh, man, I can't wait yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what Nintendo my, is going to be throwing out this boy, year. My, my kids' kids will be so excited about that. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Briar, you better not start. Dude, my Don't kids start are sixteen; they've shit. aged out of that kitty game. Uh, you gotta use your hands. That's a baby's toy. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first fighter. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lastly, uh, I hope there's some really hot VR stuff, man. 
I want to mm. I, I want to oh, see yeah. some new hotness with VR. I want to see some more immersive get in there stuff because Resident Evil I'm, style, you mean? I'm picking up my old job next month, so I'm going to be doing glass and going back to concrete. You bet your ass I'm getting me some VR soon. You I'm, got I'm, damn right. Shit. I need to get into that Star Trek game with you guys. I want to role I play, play it. it. Today. I want to take it way First too time. seriously, and I want to. I want the three of us to take a random Hold blueberry on. in with us. I mean, do. I, you know, you say this. I know I guys in chat who would time. love to play with us. I think Hugo yeah. has said he'd love to play. Briar, I got You're this in. morning. I got this morning at eight o'clock with Ellie. She hung with me for two hours in here, and I played Star Star Trek Bridge Crew for the very first time. And let me just say that those controls and shit, everything you have to do is very technical. Is exactly like the fucking show. It's not nice. like easy control. You gotta actually go through these menus and options and, and power up your fucking engines or uh, raise shields, all this kind of junk. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. I, I just went through this tu tutorial by myself, but yeah, that's something we need to definitely. Can't any excuse to for us to be yelling and making fun of each of each other? I'm in. Yes, <laughs> I can create. <laughs> to take it too seriously, like be the captain. And be like, I, didn't, too, so yeah, it's, I didn't give you command to raise the shields. All right, raise the shields. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to do it to the brig captain. We need to. We we definitely need to get Hugo in, but we need to do one where we just bring in somebody completely fucking random from the internet and don't yeah. tell them that we're role playing it. I like just it. Take way too serious. I like, like it, man. It, it, you know, so the good. state of VR right now is 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 weird because like uh the vive has like their their less expensive headset and setup but they also have that like vive pro that's like stupid expensive oculus has the you can buy the whole setup for 400 dollars right now but people are saying their next headset is like right around the corner and it's really like a step forward so it's it'll be interesting to watch like as this stuff comes out right now and you guys linus's video on that he got the new Vive. Oh, he, he got he did. Oh, the Vive Pro. He didn't like it. Yeah, he did not like it. Yeah. Um, he says there was more steps backwards than steps forward, in my opinion. Um, he. So I've I watched. I've funny. also watched a couple other guys like Tribal Instincts mm -hmm. that loved it. I'm not buying okay. one. Eight hundred dollars for a for a headset right now. I think it's silly. When like I'm what I want. Yeah. I don't want an iteration on the current headset. I want like the next step, right? And right. I think that's what Oculus is looking for. Okay, looking to put out soon. Nice. I don't know okay, how so soon. It could be a year from now, but maybe at E3. I'm gonna go uh, through my, my quick quick predictions. I'm sorry, I Beastly. We've run out of time. We're moving on to the next topic. <laughs> Get wrecked, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> So, God damn it. there's some, there's a couple that uh, were left in our comment section here on Twitch. Uh, Spider-Man was mm. one. Okay. The new Spider-Man on PS4. Spider-Man did look good. A new Forza game, which I personally don't care about, but I know a lot of people really love that. Black Ops 4, of course. What uh, do you guys think about Black Ops 4? From what you guys watched the trailers for that? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, and I think it looks fun. I think it looks fun, and and they're going to include a battle royale mode in that game. Are you gonna get it, Beastly? Are you are you yeah, sold I'm already? Absolutely. It's Black Ops. There's okay, no way yeah. I can. Okay, right. they, Black Ops, awesome. Love me some Black Ops. Uh, my buddy Will, which I'm sure he'll he'll jump in the uh, chat here fashionably late. Uh, he was asking me, "Yo, are you gonna get that new COD for the battle royale?" And I said, "Hell no! I didn't buy Call of Duty last year for the first time, and I'm so happy that I stuck to my guns and I couldn't even finish my sentence." And he said. Bullshit. Revolver said that if Call of Duty ever made a battle, a royale, battle royale, that you guys would be all over it. And I said, "You son of a bitch." I guess I'm buying it now. You know what, so. Will? I'm a complex human being, and I change my mind sometimes. Deal with it, Will. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to you me. know, you try, you try having it your every word remembered. Memorialized yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on here. I didn't you know, know I was I, on fucking trial. I still get you for not beating Final Fantasy 15. You know, people ask me, do I really love Final Fantasy all the time? Because yeah, you call yourself a I... Final Fantasy fan. You ain't even played it. Ooh. I don't know what kind of kind of bullshit that is, man. That's just misrepresenting. Continuing on. <laughs> someone said they'd like to see a remaster of Modern Warfare 2. But that's already out, isn't it? I think it's coming out. Really? 
Yeah, but it's not going to have multiplayer. What? Yeah, it's going to be a single player campaign only. Fucking trial? Oh, man, they, they done fucked up. That I want campaign to... better give me the biggest boner of all time, or it's going to be the biggest waste of money, dude. <laughs> it better have single player zombies in it. God damn. Um, and the last uh, suggestion in our uh, Twitch chat was Splinter Cell, a new Splinter Cell game. Would you guys play Splinter Cell? Sam Fisher? Yeah, man, as long as you can do the night vision and it goes when you turn it on and I'm in. That noise hits every pleasure zone. I don't know what it is about it, but that night vision noise. I love the old Splinter Cells. I love sneaking around because I am the biggest, clumsiest idiot in real life and suck at sneaking around. So if I could do it in a game... <laughs> yeah, I, I've never played any of those games. Never played a Splinter Cell in my life. Um, but I do have a question, and it should have been a fucking topic for next week. But what happened to nighttime levels like in multiplayer? How come we don't see that like in Call of Duties or, you know... Do you guys remember when we, you could play versus multiplayer mm -hmm. and, and actually turn on night vision and play against people? That's something that went away a few years ago. As far as my recollection, there's really not any Call of Duties that have like night vision maps Correct, or nighttime yeah. What the fuck Remember, happened? Cod Four had you had night vision in multiplayer. Mm hmm. Like you can yeah, turn on yeah. night vision. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's something that doesn't really exist anymore. Hey, oh. remember there was that there was that map on that ship that was a big ass storm. Um, oh yeah, what was the name pretty, of that map? That was a good map. Decent. That was a good map, map, dude. I had some be Kobe hard. grenades, dude. Some Kobe <laughs> shots throwing hand Kobe. grenades. I'd, I'd even just leave it hanging too when I was done. Like, That's a good point, though. I, I haven't <laughs> seen no that in a long time. time. Multiplayer maps, and it's it's become because I used to play Ghost Recon when Ghost Recon was new on like the original Xbox and you know Xbox, the, the original big boy, and. uh we play nighttime maps against people, and it was really fucking fun. It'd be the same map nice. that you get during the day, and it's like it would change the whole dynamic of the way you play because you could be in a certain place and nobody would know it because it's nighttime, and it just really made the game more exciting. It's something yeah, I don't see. Yeah, the way Call so of Duty's radar worked, it worked for that too because you could stay off that radar as long as you didn't make any noise. That was my favorite build was to do, like, silencers and stay off the radar for UAVs and stuff like that and just camp and be so toxic. Oh, uh, see, I like to run around, and I used, uh, what was it, the one that made your footsteps quiet? So yeah, people yeah. didn't hear you, but I could hear them. Yeah. And I used to wear those fucking $250 Astros before anybody else had them. I used to sound horror the shit out of that game. <laughs> That's the how I found you, bro. I used to it. watch your fucking YouTube videos. I'm like, this guy is amazing. Yeah. I had a buddy that I was would do cheating. that. I had a, <laughs> I I had a buddy that, that had, at the time, he had like the first iteration of like Turtle Beaches and stuff, and he'd be playing. He'd be like, shh, shh, quiet, quiet. He's to your right, Wilson. I'm like, how the fuck do you? And then just get shot up. And like, <laughs> and yeah, I just say, I was like, you sound horn, bitch, man. Oh, like, man. And once sound I did whore, it, I would sound horn. Oh, yep. And then I'd flop down on my belly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I had it mapped out, so all I had to do was push the fucking thumbstick in. And I'd be like, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing with Robbie. Robbie and I, Robbie from Beastly, the Beastly Thought Show, used to be one of the co-hosts of the Beastly Thought Show. We were playing one time. He randomly got matched in one of my lobbies, and I was playing, um, uh, you know, like, a, what is it, 1v7. What's it called in Call of Duty? It's not Rumble. It's, it's um. Uh, Every man for yourself, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, free, yeah. Free, for, free for all. Free for all. Thank you. Free for all. And he's like, "All you fucking do is listen to the foot, fucking footsteps and flop down on your belly." He's <laughs> like, flopping around like a right. fucking Everyone fish on the map. Right. <laughs> doing the floppy <laughs> fish just bloop everywhere. Sometimes when I snuck up behind somebody, I'd flop down on my belly just in case. <laughs> just in Got case. A reaction. You are so. <laughs> All right, so real quick, because I, we digress quite a bit. I got a couple that I'm excited about. I want Kingdom Hearts. I'm sorry, Beasley, we ran out of time. Next topic? Yep. <laughs> now, man, we just keep running out of time. <laughs> oh, wait. This is the same topic I said that about last time. <laughs> God dang it, man. I want Kingdom Heart 3's release date. Uh, I've seen a lot of that game. It looks like a ton of fun. I'm a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts. It looks like... Uh, Square has put a ton of work into the game. It's not just a you know kind of a button mashing experience. There's ton. There's lots of layers of intricacy to the way that you play in this game, and that they and the the way that they. Of course, you guys know uh, Kingdom Hearts. 
the the most minute details of these worlds have been included for yeah. all these different characters. I want to see if they're going to bring in all this new Marvel and Disney stuff, which more than likely they will. We're going to probably see Star Wars. We're probably going to see the Avengers and all this stuff for this game. And for what I've seen, it looks incredible. So I can't wait. It already has a 2018 release date. I can't wait to Is see. Is it going to have Guardians of the Galaxy in it? It could. Absolutely, it could. Yeah. I might I, play I mean, it if it has Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> He's in. I want Final Baby. Fantasy oh, Lord, do you guys remember 2015 E3? Final Fantasy VII was announced. I was just going to say that. Sony won the E3 over a fucking announcement that hasn't come to fruition. It was a spark that hasn't even turned into the tiniest flame yet. Like, we've seen nothing else. I mean, they did do a vertical slice. It looked amazing. You know, it made me have the biggest erection. All Everybody in the house had to step outside uh, when I saw Dubuku, that. Dubuku! Was... Dubuku! <laughs> <laughs> no, the Atlanta no. Anaconda grew in ten times its size. Buku like Anaconda. <laughs> I don't know what's going on? I just heard Kate knocking on the window. Uh, but yeah, I, I want a release date for Final Fantasy VII. It's been three long years of us waiting. I, I think have, you're gonna be waiting, man. Aren't they having like some real development issues with that game? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't really followed the story because it's been three years. I don't even know what's you been going on. You call yourself like a Final it's Fantasy it. fan. Ash says, shameful. Ash says shameful. Final Fantasy 7 2025. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, but I, you know, they're supposed to be releasing that in kind of episodic uh, nature, similar to like Resident Evil Revelations 2 and some of the other episodic games like Telltale. It'll be a longer experience. Each episode should be as long as a regular full fledged $60 game, is from what I've understood. So I'm thinking, even if things are going wrong, they have to have that first section completed by now it's been three years i'd be you know to me it'd be a big letdown if we don't get any news about final fantasy 7 so i'm looking forward to that there's rumblings that from software is going to reveal something new at e3 Bloodborne this year. Two. they showed that at uh what was this was it the game said, awards yeah, yeah but they didn't say what it was right they just showed that like trailer of like and, blood, and i blood want blood Bloodborne <laughs> Two, and i want it to run good and i want it to come on come out on pc but it probably won't now i've got an erection <laughs> they, do you guys think that on PC runs so good? Uh, do you but, think it's a crime that, like, if they don't put it out on PC, like, don't you think that's kind of like a crime of like a game that could run so well on PC, but because it got the license for console only, it's like held back with things like frame rates and things like that? Like, oh, I, I mean, from I software, as as genius as they are, they've they've constantly engine. had problems with their engine and getting it to run well on even right. PC. I mean. Dark yeah. Souls 1 just got a remaster. The first game, Dark Souls 1, came out on PC. It ran at 30 frames per second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I, I don't would know be if, nice. I, if I consider it to be a crime. Um, like 30 would be nice for Bloodborne. But, yeah. <laughs> Solid 30 instead of 15 if anything, and maybe 30. If, if anything, you know, if you have every avenue to play games, it could be seen as an unfortunate event. But sometimes it's business. And, and for, you know, for the people who have gaming PCs, uh, it, it really stings, you know, those situations. So I got to be totally honest. I also want to see what's going on with Shinmu 3. Big fan of Shinmu. Uh, and, uh, you know, years ago when that, that was announced at the same E3 2015. Dude, you know how long it's been looked since that? I wandered around looking for sailors? Hey, have you seen any sailors? Hey, <laughs> have you seen any sailors? I'm looking for sailors. That looks, that sounds have like you guys Gary's seen any game. sailors? <laughs> that sounds like Gary's that is game. Gary's game. <laughs> Going looking for some strapping young sailors. Uh, don't you think that was kind of fucked up the way they announced that? They're like, Shenmue 3, and everyone's like, oh my fucking God. And then they're like, right. oh yeah, it's crowdfunded. Yeah, we yeah to donate to our Kickstarter. <laughs> like, like, not shame, shame, not shame on what's the, the, the guy who made Shenmue. Uh, not sh- not shame on him. I feel like they kind of did him dirty with that. I feel like that dude commanded enough respect that they could have just announced his game and freaking funded Sony, it. But Sony had already made an agreement before E3 that they were going to fund a significant portion of it. So it I was, feel like it was a test. Like it yeah. was a, eh, see we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll people, throw you a bone, but you but you gotta you gotta come up with the rest we'll sort of thing. I, I thought it was kind of <laughs> shitty. Uh, I got three yeah. three more quick ones. Bayonetta three. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, Bayonetta. Boobs, guns, and boots. Oh, Bayonetta, that's a sexy bitch. And I don't mean <laughs> bitch in a derogatory way. I mean in a sexy way. Yeah. Like how women say, I'm the baddest bitch. That's right. She's that. a bad bitch. She's a bad bitch. <laughs> um, also, uh, I want to know if they're going to do anything as far as making an announcement for a future 
more technologically advanced PSVR because they did release, mm. you know, a, a new headset and, and it's virtually the same one. And I was playing, the, you know, the one I have here and it's fine for people who have don't have PCs or don't really know what Oculus or HTC Vive can do. But now they've got new headsets coming out. And I wonder, I want to know if Sony, since Sony does have the mind, the, the huge mind share uh, of VR customers, if they're planning on a future for these people, and that leads to my next one, is there going to be a PlayStation 5 announcement? Uh, we all know that, you know, the rumblings are in the air that Sony is expecting to make an announcement by 2019. And if history is any indication with games like Final Fantasy VII and Shenmue Three, they can make an announcement this year. And it could come out in 2020 and people wouldn't cry boo about it. So I'm thinking, you know, we might hear something. Have or they at least some hope. Like, really announced it so early? Have they? I the don't think P- they have. They announced four. it at. Oh, yeah. I, you know, Xbox four? did that. PS4, they did it? Yeah, PS4 was announced two years before it came out. Really? What if they announce a new handheld Sony? <sighs> Gary. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Gary. Um, I w- you know, if, if Sony announced it, I actually watched uh, Digital Foundry did a video today on the original release of the PSP and the Nintendo DS, and I watched Kazurai on on stage holding the PSP in a very big shirt that didn't fit him, and I was excited as hell back then. Uh, big shirt that didn't fit. Him. It did it looked like he was like a balloon with Kazurai's head on it, but I. <laughs> I would love if Sony announced a new uh, handheld. And to me, the only way it would actually be a viable handheld is if they went kind of in the direction of Nintendo, which they've tried to do. They've actually tried to do this with the PSP. You can actually play your PSP on a TV and with the Vita, of course, with myriad ways to play Vita. Um, and, and the Vita actually included ways to play your PlayStation 4 through it. So I think they've tried it. They tried to find a sweet spot and it didn't really mesh with the consumer the way that Nintendo has kind of found it. Nintendo really is the, the king of, of mobile or the king of handhelds. But if Sony were to do it, I think they'd probably go in that direction. And to me, that would be very exciting because I'm a Sony fanboy. I actually love Sony. So to me, that would be a great, great thing. But my, I'd my be more la- interested in NVIDIA making a new shield. You really? Yeah. To be honest. I think the Vita outsold the shield. I don't give a shit. I fucking hate the Vita. I mean, I don't hate the Vita, but I, I don't yeah, like the Vita. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Yes. Now, that Gary's, like now that Gary's gone, I can yeah. let my feelings be known. I fucking hate easy. the Vita. <laughs> it seems like the longer your beard get, the more hateful you get about the fucking Vita, man. He's like, I didn't want to hack my Vita anyway. Fuck you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't hate the Vita. The Vita, to me, I mean, it just had so little good software on it. It was so expensive when it came out. I paid a lot of money for that thing when it first came out. And it was so fucking uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. The version two of the Vita, much more comfortable than version one. That, but it's like it's, man. There's just nothing to play on it. There's very little to play on it. The you indies make more games than Sony does, and you now I mean support for it is gone. Right? It's like they're yeah they're no longer releasing games for it. At least hardware. Yeah. That's really sad that it's not supported. But like Beasley had mentioned this in our unused topic section at one time. And it was, uh, do you think there's a possibility? It's just like my PS Vita. (laughs) All right. Do you think there's a possibility of an Xbox portable console ever? Anything's possible, man. Uh, You know, never. It'll never happen. You don't think that's their forte? They don't even want to. You have to look to New Horizons, okay? Phil Spencer is now the head of the New Horizon is not mobile gaming. Mobile gaming is not a New Horizon. It's not true. They are getting crushed on by cell phones. Like, but they're also I think even like, Nintendo knows they yeah, can't compete anymore in that space. Yeah, but portable gaming is not the same as mobile gaming. I mean, you don't play video games on your phone, but no. you switch. You switch. Uh, but I never I didn't play games on my DS. You had to announce something real you had to make a really special game for me to pull out my DS. You had to make Zelda was it Link's Awakening? The one that, um, Link no, Between Link, Worlds. Link Between Worlds, right? That got me mm-hmm. to play the, the DS. Yep. Uh the Metroid games got me well, to play the that's DS. That's a good point. But I mean, I'm just not a mobile gamer, so like I, I don't want to play games on my phone. I don't want to play games on a DS. I don't play play games on a PSP. I'd rather issue, sit in front of a PC or a console and play a game. The, the the issue with that proposition, Willie, is Xbox has fewer games than 
its contemporaries when it comes to, you know, top tier triple A kind of experiences that people really gravitate toward. They're having issues keeping up with the competition now. And so if they were to put something out as far as a mobile, what are they going to do? Put a, do a mobile Halo or another remaster of an older game? Uh, you know, it's not like a Nintendo kind of property. Nintendo can put Nintendo IPs out on a Switch. You can play on the TV and on the go and people will just eat them up. And, Nintendo and think, IPs were good for mobile, too. You know, Mario yes. works good on on a, a mobile. Zelda works good on a mobile. God of War, it didn't really work for me on a mobile. You know, it just didn't work for me on a mobile. It's too small. It's too much like a console game. I couldn't just, like, pause it and put it away when I needed to. It was, it was, it was a console game but on a mobile platform. My, that, my what was might, the... Uh, uh, the PS she loves, she loves was the PS stuff. Vita. Well, you guys are mobile gamers. You know, you like the mobile thing. And to me, if I'm gonna pick up a mobile, I don't know. It it doesn't fit in my lifestyle. I guess is really what it is. That's it's exactly. Right. It. But it like, what it was the fit. Uncharted? I fucking adore the Uncharted games. Yeah. The Uncharted they put on the Vita. That was a I shitty fucking first. version of Uncharted. Killzone kind of sucked. You could no, like, I didn't. Killzone shooters. Mercenary was great. Oh, okay. <laughs> piece of my bad dog. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you want to fight, brother? <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary's gone. He can't help you now. No one can help you now, Beastly. <laughs> Gary, I mean, Gary, they're talking about kills on mercenary. Yeah. Not showing it. Golden <laughs> Both great. Damn it. No, so nice you're totally right about there's no chance in hell for an Xbox portable when they'd have to come, like, especially when there's companies like um you mentioned the nvidia shield when they're already trying to i wouldn't call it portable but you know what i mean like they're doing pc games at a much more like in a much more casual way with a controller and having a box in your uh your living room that connects to your pc i don't yeah, think they do it but that's why i said it, if nvidia too. shield i'd be more interested in nvidia shield because mm. i could play there's so many pc games that i find are much more mobile friendly than than anything Sony's doing, and especially anything Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft's not doing anything. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe Brian dissing Microsoft like that. Shit, that's what you mean. But like you know, like uh, there's so many cool games. Like, what's that strategy game that just came out that everybody's fucking loving? That would be perfect for uh, mobile. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, like those, uh, there's all sorts of like 2D platformers that are coming out constantly on PC. Plus, the price is right for PC games. It's so much easier for me to justify spending like eight dollars on a mobile game than it is to spend like forty dollars so on a mobile Steam game. Steam connects with. You can actually have your Steam library on it. Yeah, Nvidia Shield. Yeah. Nvidia yeah. Shield. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know what would sell a new portable handheld unit if you could play Fortnite on it? You're damn right. Well, that, you PSP already can on iPhone sell. and Android, can't you? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. You hold can on. Pretend to play Fortnite on a mobile phone. You know, you know how you get like the Fisher Price, like little uh Wilson's over here putting a warrant on. Hold up. Yeah, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Let me pop my bubble, bitch. Uh, but like I'm like, gonna pop a can, bubble on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Protect this shit. Uh like you can pre- you could pretend to play with dump trucks and things like that with your Fisher Price toys, or you could actually go crawl into a dump truck and do some real work. You know, I feel like that's the difference between some games on mobile and if you had an actual portable handheld system that could play the exact same version of Fortnite that you could play on pc or console i think that thing would sell like fucking hotcakes that's all you have to do even if it only played Fortnite, people buy it the fucking shit out of it dude Fortnite box. and then they'd then they'd pump 20 bucks into their v you guys think Fortnite I'm is so sick like of this a, shit. you think Fortnite is going to be a lasting trend you think you think we'll be talking about Fortnite this time that's, next year? that's the other topic yeah um let, let me just say this, okay? I, I played Fortnite a handful of times. I think it's a fun game, uh, but it's absolutely taken over my children's lives. They like tried Minecraft? to get worse, <laughs> bro, worse. They tried to get Nina into it yesterday. She was in there in her bed playing. She looked at me and said, "I love Fortnite. I, I want to smash a PlayStation because it has literally taken away my oh, son's ability to do anything." Anything. It's like if they got choices, if they got anything to do, if they got uh, you know final exams, anything going on. They're they're talking, you know, sl- on the sly on their phone, talking to their friends about what's going on in Fortnite. When Thanos was revealed in Fortnite, my son acted like he just got, he just proposed, and some woman said yes. He my oh, my son, seventeen in a couple of days. Dad, you gotta see Thanos. I said, son, 
No fucking thanks. And so that's that's why I I, uh, I asked this question. Battle Royale is a big thing. And as we can see with Call of Duty, more and more developers are moving in that direction. They they see the you know the prominence of this type of game and how how many people are getting involved and how many people love it. Do you guys think it's a fad? We've seen fads come and go. We've seen it over the course of years, and some things are are fun to look at, and some things are just tragedies. Do you guys think Battle Royale is here to stay, or do you think that it'll it'll dry up uh, and and leave us peacefully and and leave our I think children it's definitely alone? here to stay. I'll be honest Agreed. with you. I really do think it's here to say it's such a different way of playing a multiplayer game in such a more epic way. And there's so much more they can do with it. We've only seen the the yep. tip of what they can do with, with battle Royale, right? Is we've seen the, you know, we've seen the, the PUBG way of doing it. We've seen the Fortnite way of doing it. We're going to see COD come out and do it. We've seen, you know, I played a game called islands of nine this winter, which did it like, you know, very fast paced first person shooter way, which I was really enjoying. There's going to be what was I can't remember the name of the game. There's they're developing now that's gonna have four hundred players. No, 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 huh? not Battlefield. Four hundred players uh in a battle royale. Um and the graphics looked insane. I don't know if they'll actually release with those graphics. I mean th- this thing, I, I don't know that it'll always be as popular as it is. It might be like fighting games where it reaches like this huge peak of popularity. You know, like Street Fighter came out, Mortal Kombat came mm. out. They got insanely popular. It was all that anybody was playing. And then it calmed down, but there's there's still fighting games. You know what I'm saying? Or Oh, it's called Mavericks at 400 players. Mavericks, yeah. That thing Holy looks shit. insane, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's going away. It might be a fad, and it might get less popular, but it's definitely not going away because it's, it's pretty cool. I think you nailed it, dude. I think it's a genre that's here to stay. Like when Doom came out, you know what I mean? It, it was it was awesome. There had been, you know, obviously Wolfenstein came out before that, you know what I mean? And, you know, same company and stuff like that. And it kept getting better and better. And I do feel like there is this one title that comes along in a genre that redefines the genre. And I feel like Doom did a really good job at that. And I feel like that's kind of Fortnite's role. Um, I think <clears throat> Fortnite someday will fade away but i feel like we'll look back on it as like doom like yeah that shit paved the way you know back in my day doom was the definitive first person shooter experience you think experience. we'll look at fortnite that way and not PUBG I do. that way no i, I think i think 100 percent fortnite, fortnite is definitely going to be i mean brian I, I was just getting ready to ask do you guys remember when PUBG was like at the top and then mm-hmm. they were like okay because fortnite was a different game before the the battle royale came out yep. And, and then they were like, okay, we're going to do something similar to PUBG. And I was like, look at these fucking copycats. That's how I felt. I was like, who are these guys? They're going to steal this. They got the same engine. They were you know, doing this similar shit. They're going to steal the idea and run with it. It yeah. ended up taking off and becoming a much bigger yeah. kind of. It'll be fun to watch now that we're going to have like $60 versions of Battle Royale games come out, right? Like, do you think that the Battle Royale market will will take to that? I mean, you still can't really play PUBG on a console, right? I know you can play it. It's on <laughs> Xbox, but it's not. Last time I looked at it, it didn't even look playable. It's, it's, better, than, it's better than it was. Um, so, like, it'll be interesting to see, like, when Call of Duty comes out, when Battlefield, what are they calling it, Battlefield 5, this next one? Mm-hmm. What the fuck is with Battlefield and names, man? They went from Battlefield 4 to Battlefield 1 and then to Battlefield 5. <laughs> <laughs> It's more they went from let me repeat. Legend of Zelda. Let me repeat. It's, they went from Battlefield yeah. 4 to Battlefield 1. So the next game after 4 <laughs> was 1. And then the next one after 4, 1, 5. Yeah. It's more convoluted than Legend <laughs> of Zelda timeline. Right? Like, it's, it's, it's more fucked up than that. I agree. But I mean, seriously, like, I mean, Battlefield is built for, for this, right? Like, I agree. Like, everybody just assumes yeah, they're going to do it, is, right? Yeah. And like it seems like it'd be really fun in a battlefield. Like the battlefield systems would be but, work but really is, well. Isn't but it's sixty dollars predicated on survival too? So you, you actually have to fortify yourself during the battle. It's not like Call of Duty where you just that's run what it is now. But I mean, isn't there isn't there room for other stuff? I mean, there's definitely room for other looks on this. I mean, there's there's definitely room for the clay fighters and the primal rages of the. Of the battle royale world. Those are the fucking really. <laughs> just throw clay fighter under the fucking bus. 
<laughs> don't do what, what was the uh the snowman's name in that damn it i, I thought i remember i almost called him sweet tooth but that's uh but that's uh twisted metal um no i like i feel like okay here's the thing a lot of people are giving PUBG credit for starting this shit arma was the first game to drop people in open world environment, drop them in randomly. Are you sure about this? Because I think it Random... was Minecraft. No, not in like a battle royale. No, yeah, Arma... I think it was. I think the be... pretty they sure had... Arma two did Arma two come Arma out was before out Minecraft. Before. Yeah, yeah, Arma two was out. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know. Dropped... Minecraft is pretty old. It's like 15 this, years old at this point. This is as close to the current battle royale that we have right now. You dropped into a random zone. Gear was randomized. It came down to the last player, and the zone shrinked to keep people from camping in one spot. Yeah. Um, I, to this day, feel like that was the best version of any Battle Royale that has ever come out. Ever. Really? It was the Arma 2 version. Yeah. I would like to see Arma come out with the new version. But you know what just came into single-player beta? DayZ did. That's right. All the naysayers out there. Fuck you. You're fucking with us. That's not true. It is. It's in beta, but it's Dude, only you. I don't believe mode. that for a second. <laughs> Ryan was stirring that fucking pot. I'd like to see you're, Daisy. You're, do you're a sitting here right telling me that they came out of beta. Daisy came out of beta. No, no, they went into beta. It's been an alpha oh. for like nine years. <laughs> yeah, they went into beta. Oh, nine years. okay. Hallelujah. I got you. Well, I'm glad they made it out of alpha phase for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, right. We no more. We no longer alpha. We beta. Let's go. <laughs> I'd like to see Daisy do it. I think that shit would be dope. I think it'd be awesome. With uh, I'd like to see more. Isn't Daisy a, a Arma mod? It's an open yeah. world. It started as an Arma mod, but it's a standalone now. I mean, it's its own thing. But like, I would. My point being, I would like to see more PVE elements put into these battle royales. I don't want to just be threatened by the player. I would love to see like a zombie apocalypse oh, yeah. where, where there's a zone and maybe fifty to a hundred zombies just casually roaming down the street waiting for you to step on a twig. I would like to see there not be least. a zone. I would like to see the PVE element just get more oh, difficult and more difficult. Yeah. Like, as, you know, the further away from the center you get, right? Like, mm. so that that is the blue wall, is the mm -hmm. PVE. Like, you know, in Fortnite, it'd be zombies just all of a sudden just are everywhere if you're mm -hmm. outside of that blue wall. So you still have PvP, but you got PvE. And, and then there could be random PvE stuff in the middle, too. That would be cool, man. That yeah. blue wall would just be zombies running everywhere. Let's make this shit. Let's get on it. <laughs> Dude, shh, shh, never mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this podcast. <laughs> Goes over. Thanks for coming out, guys. Yep. Bye off. Bye. <laughs> You'll see us at next next year's E3. Right. <laughs> this storm sounds like a nuclear bomb outside my house. Jesus Christ. Okay, so is, is that the what last, it's a storm? Is, I can hear that through the mic. That is a storm. A tater. And, look, storm. and I don't see any fucking rain. <laughs> it's a tater nader. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any rain, so this is actually pretty troubling to me. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So the last topic is uh, one that's uh, – whose fucking topic is this? This is my topic. Is this, is this the, the racism one? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, so this is – let me – I'm bringing up the topics. Here it is. Okay. So why can I find it? All right, so the topic is, what's the most racist, racist thing that you've ever done accidentally? And I'll, so I'll, I'll give you guys my story, okay? okay. I, some, of you, some people in chat have already heard the story, but uh, it was an accidentally completely fucking racist thing that I did. And I feel very bad about, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay? BC's like, I could count seven that you've done in the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, the story is this. Me and my wife, we go to a Thai food place, mm -hmm. right? And we sit down, and we're ordering food. And, uh, you know, I whenever I go to, uh, I don't know, what do you call a restaurant that serves, like, foreign food? A foreign restaurant? Sure. I, one of my favorite things to do is look at the beer menu, right? Is to find yeah. out, like, what – because they usually have be beers from that country. Of beers. Right. And so I always like to look at the beer menu. So I didn't see any beer on the menu, so I asked the waiter, uh, what are the best Taiwanese beers? 
Oh my god. That waiter looked at me like I was the biggest fucking asshole. Back when he <laughs> Damn you, bro. For anybody who didn't catch that, we were at a <laughs> Thai food restaurant from Thailand. <laughs> and I asked the dude, what are the best Taiwanese beers? <laughs> we're not from Taiwan, you. Angry My man. wife, I didn't even catch what I had done until the waiter had walked away. Like, the waiter looked at me like I was an asshole. I didn't really understand. Like, maybe they don't have beer in, Ty- <laughs> in, Taiwan. in Taiwan. In Taiwan. In Taiwan. So you were even still oblivious. <laughs> My <laughs> wife has to tell me, you just asked the guy what the best beers in Taiwan are. Uh-huh. I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Probably standing there going, I don't know, motherfucker. I was born in America. What do you want to eat? <laughs> That's pretty awesome, bro. Uh, you know what? You, you did good, Mary and her. She's gonna I got, I got one. And I, I hope this isn't this isn't too bad. But like, I this was a moment that I'm not proud of. Okay, I was on my way down to Texas. I had not gotten my mind right in over 16 hours. Okay. <laughs> It's pretty sad. Willie, sweet nigga Willie's got the shakes. It's pretty sad <laughs> when you think more clear on weed than 16 hours after weed. So with that being said, we were on our way down to Texas and we saw a billboard and it was in Spanish. <clears throat> and I didn't think before I said anything. I said, why is all that in English lettering? And my buddy said, because they use English letters in Spanish wording. And I said, huh, you know, for being some of the most hardworking people I've ever met in my life, that's pretty fucking lazy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, what the fuck? (laughs) It didn't didn't even realize what had come out of my mouth at the time. And that was the most most accidental racist thing I've ever said in my life. I got another one. I was in a hotel room with a (laughs) where we went to a Yankee game and a bunch of like a bunch of guy friends and I had gotten a hotel room, and we were all sleeping in the hotel room, drinking all fucking night. Right, wake up completely, probably sh- still shit faced. Right, <laughs> and there's a knock at the door. It's housekeeping, and I just yell out, "Occupado." <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty fucked up, bro. <laughs> that's a bad one. What's, that is a bad one. <laughs> You know what I, I hate the most is that when you're trying not to be rude, but like if somebody has a foreign accent and you can't understand what they're saying and you don't want to be that guy that says what three times, uh, me and my friends had been up all night and we ended up getting Chinese food like the next afternoon before we started settling down. And the lady asked him if he wanted fried rice or white rice, but it didn't sound like that. You know, it comes yeah, out why, fried why? or white rice. Why, why? He kept why, why? saying, what and by the third time he said what he just looked over at all of us like fucking help me (laughs) (laughs) we're like do you want fried rice or white rice he's like oh (laughs) like like, but i've been there in that moment where you don't want to be super rude and be like i can't you know i'm i'm dumb right now i can't understand what you're trying to say like that was a funny moment. Plus, we had been up for about 24 hours as well, so that we had that going for us. <laughs> I, I wish my story could be as wholesome and accidental as you guys, but it wasn't. You guys know from my history that I was actually raised in a very, very pro-black, anti-everything-else household. My dad, uh, many people I know now will consider my father a racist asshole. Of course, these uh, tendencies have died down over, say, the last 10 years. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, but growing up in my father's household, it was a, my, my very, very strict father and my six brothers. And uh, he raised us, you know, kind of like this reverse backwoods plantation that everyone uh, that didn't look like us had our worst interests in, in mind. And, uh, I, I grew up listening and hearing this on a you know pretty current basis, not current, but con- uh, concurrent basis white, blonde hair, blue-eyed devils. And so that was something I actually grew up listening to. I didn't have any white friends. I wasn't allowed to. Uh, I I wasn't allowed to hang out with 
you know, any anyone who didn't look like me. Uh, and as a child, you grow up in a household of parents, you think that they're telling you the truth. I mean, it's just the way it is. Judging by and, your uh, current white friends, I'd say he was right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> This is my this is, this is my life, right? <laughs> now, this happened to me when I was 18 years old, uh, 17 years old. I'm sorry, I was because my family skates. We skate. We did very avidly. Really good skaters. My father, myself, and all my brothers. And uh, we were at this this place down here in Atlanta called Sparkles, and it's usually a all black event. And uh, we back then I was really in shape. I was nice. Anyway, this white girl came out of nowhere. It was like a warp in time space. All of a sudden on the floor, there's a very attractive white girl skating towards me. She's in the same age group as me. Just fair skin, beautiful. Just, it was a beautiful girl. Very beautiful. Uh, and so she skated up to me and I was skating backwards and I didn't know what to do. She just came up to me. My father's there. He was standing on the side. And uh, he, she said, excuse me, can I skate with you? And I, I looked over and I saw my dad and like my brothers look like Black Panther congregation sitting <laughs> over to the side. They're kind of looking at me like, what you going to do, cuz? <laughs> and I just said the truth to her. And that was the most racist moment of my entire life. Uh, I've since made it for it many times. But uh, I looked at this, this young lady and she was probably 16 or 17. I said, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't skate with white girls. And she said, oh. This is like, I swear to God, I know what it's like to be a white racist because this is the shit that's happened to black folks for generations. Mm. But I, I said to her, and she, like, her jaw dropped. She's like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, and you so, just changed her outlook now. She sees it from the other side now. Right? It's okay all the time. This lady probably now, in her mid-30s, probably hates black folks. They're just inconsiderate racist asshole. <laughs> and so she started skating off the skate floor, and I'm looking at her, and I saw my dad. He just looked at me and just gave me that... Father nod, like, good job. I'll make you some pinto beans and, and macaroni later. And, and <laughs> I looked at him, and then this girl, she just skated off the floor. She skated through, past the bench. She swooped down and grabbed up her shoes and her purse and didn't stop, and she skated out the front door. And Damn. at the time, my dad, on the on the ride home, my father was like, yeah, Brett, I'm going to start calling you the ice man. He said, you cold as ice. And as a child, <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, are that supposed to be? And, you know, you grow up and you live and you learn and you actually meet people like you lovely white guys. And and your, your perspective changes it. And that wasn't an accidental thing. Uh, and, and it's for me, that's something I'm very ashamed of. But it's also a part of my past that just is the past. It's you how know? we learn, though, right? It's like exactly. That's why I don't really mind sharing stories like this, because I am yeah. ashamed of it. But it's also how you learn, right? It's how you how you move on. It's as you grow older, you you're able to put yourself in other people's shoes better. You're able to, you're able to sympathize with other points of view. You know, it's just, there's mistakes. There's the way, you know, things that happen to you when you were a child. Like for me, when I was a kid, there were certain words that were completely acceptable to use that are definitely not acceptable to use anymore. Absolutely. Like it just, you know, language has changed in that way. And I can see why. I mean, like, Using, using a word that is a descriptor for one group of people as an insult for other group of people, yes. you can totally mm-hmm. see why how that makes the the descriptor feel. The people who are described Demeaned. feel demeaned, yep. right? Like, That's but cool. we just didn't. I don't know if we didn't know that back then. Evolution, right? Yeah. It's so it's like as we learn, and, and as we get older, too. yeah, it's consideration. Yeah, consideration. totally. Consider it. So yeah, and unfortunately. You still make mistakes sometimes, but as long as you you try and learn from those mistakes and you try and grow as a person. I, I have sex with a white woman as much as I can. Uh, yeah, every day, Beasley is putting his ass on the line, trying to make up. Hers <laughs> on the line. <laughs> <laughs> that Atlanta anaconda, we know what's on the line. You know what I'm saying? Side note, when I, when I first uh, got with Kate, right? And so in my young... Well, not oh really young. My black mind never really been with a white chick before. Kate was the very first one, and I never, you know, in person saw a white woman nude. And so, uh, you know, this young tenderoni, she getting nude, and I'm looking at her body. I'm like, this looks amazing, but it doesn't look done. So it must be cold. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking this, and I talked told her about it years later. When you see like a raw steak, it's nice and pink. 
And then when you cook it, it turns brown. It's nice and warm. I'm looking, I'm like, this thing has to be cold. And then I found out I was wrong. <laughs> I just wondered where you're going with that steak analogy. <laughs> Everything that's pale doesn't have to be ice cold. Sometimes it's hotter than, hotter than fire. And that's my story. Well done. All right. I think that's going to wrap up the show then. <laughs> Thanks well for hanging done. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys, and be sure to give Gary Diaz your love. We miss him, and we wish him the best. Tell him and the baby is due in nine months. I am going to sue for child support if he does not start coming back around. That's true. I don't know how long he's going to watch you know, the, the, the royal wedding. I don't know if he's like outside of the, the Windsor or wherever they're at now. With his little Do they camp. get Wi-Fi at the palace? I don't know. Well, you have to, you, if you have any questions, you can question? email him, um, Gary Diaz eighty six at Sony Interactive. Um, that is direct line. Uh, if you want to hit him up, definitely tweet Sony and let him know that you approve of them hiring Mr. Diaz. Or get the PS Vita two division. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he, who would have thought? Y'all are gonna be blown away when Gary Diaz is presenting the Vita at this year's E three. So the Vita He'll come out there and have a handful oh. of panties. Yeah. Yeah. and a new Vita in his hand. <laughs> I absolutely almost forgot. Speaking of Gary you Diaz, have to get this fact out there. we have another Cisco fact for oh, those out thank there. thank God. For, in honor of Gary Diaz. Cisco fact honor of the of week. Gary Diaz. So, Cisco fact. Here we go. Trivia. He was the fifth housemate to be evicted on the British reality television show Celebrity Big Brother in 2010. Out of how many? Let's find out. Oh, you weren't prepared for follow-up questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> find out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Well, he was number he five. He didn't make it very far there. They didn't huh? like him because he didn't speak real English. I, you know what I was? I bet it was that platinum hair. Everybody was very uncomfortable with that hair. Just intimidating. Very uncomfortable. Oh, for a thong the whole time. The thong. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the thongs. The thong song. <laughs> Uh, it's not thong. it's not that you look bad naked it's just the thong man i'd rather you walk around with pants on or naked it's the thong that i don't like <laughs> very right. uncomfortable very uncomfortable uh, uh, it it is, it is, I, i've been wanting to try it Briar, but now that you've said it's very uncomfortable and i believe you i can't imagine nah, i've never put on a thong i've never tried it myself so this is a purely this this opinion comes purely out of ignorance that does not look like a comfortable undergarment situation. It's no. Not. No. I mean, for me, <laughs> it's for not. Me, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very particular about my rear area. And sometimes when my butt cheeks close, I get mad. I don't like anything touching me back there. Yeah. So Banana just, hammock, also equally yeah, uncomfortable. If there's a shoestring that's just grabbing me there. It's like, it's like having a wedgie 24-7, isn't it? I think you want to turn around and punch the shit out of the person. Buffalo? Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> gas station. Shit. Oh, my goodness. All right. Where do we go from there, boys? Uh, let's sign off. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> um, we are having a bit of technical difficulty with the uh, iTunes feed, but we'll get that back on track. Uh, we're sorry about the delay. Uh, thank you for hanging with us. Uh, and we love you. And we missed you. And I can't think of anything week. else to say, so I'm just going to sign out. Love you. Bye. We're still live. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I haven't hit the button. <laughs> oh. And we're live.